And now, TNA Home Video presents Destination X. Tonight, new NWA champion Christian Cage makes his first title defense against Bonnie Brown. Plus the return of the most innovative match in wrestling. Ultimate X is back, and after the legend Sting retired, the man Steve Borden promises retribution against Jeff Jarrett. It's time for Destination X. for the upcoming World X Cup. I got one for you, Professor. Do you realize right there, and you wouldn't know it by the way they conduct themselves in the ring, are the two youngest members of TNA. The and two youngest members of the TNA two roster. By 22 and 20. Well, if you've been watching TNA for the past three and a half years, you realize that yes, TNA, it is the future of professional wrestling, but it's also the present. It's the present of professional wrestling. And when you see individuals like Shelly and Lethal to kick off Destination X, you know that the top young stars in the world, they're just one place, total nonstop action wrestling. In addition to Mike Tanay and Don West doing the broadcasting, you also have the opportunity to hear Destination X as well as all of our Impact broadcasts in Spanish. Just click on that SAP button on your remote. There you see Conan on the right, Moody Jack Melendez on the left. They provide commentary in Espanol. What a different, st different styles that these two have. Alex Shelley's such an incredible Matt wrestler. And he does things that really are so hard for guys to figure out. I mean, they're so used to guys coming at him at certain speeds and have counter moves. Alex Shelley is one of the most difficult wrestlers to prepare for because he comes in. Look at this. Look at what I'm talking about. And look at this. From, from the bottom of the hole, you saw both men paintbrushing each other. I think Jay Lethal got the better of it. I'll tell you, you look at Jay Lethal and you would think he would be intimidated to be on this kind of a stage right here with the pack house being Destination X. But this kid, so mature at 20 years old, so excited to be a part of TNA. And every day he comes out here and shows us why he's the future of this business. Intimidated? I don't think so, Don. You're right, he looks at this as a proving ground to show that he belongs among the best in our profession. And both men stand at the ready and listen to the crowd roar. You 
talk about a, a chess match right here. These two are really feeling each other out. I mean, if if Jay Lethal would have came out looking for the high flying moves from the start, Alex Shelley would have buried him. So I'm very impressed with how Jay Lethal was conducting himself. But Alex Shelley is one of those that when you least expect it, he finds a way to get you into a type of hole that you have no way out of. I want to send a special shout out, a special hello to our international audience, those of you outside of North America who are watching Destination X via MediaZone.com on the World Wide Web. That's a first on for TNA. What a way. I mean, no matter where you're at, if you happen to be out of the country, you can tune it in on the web and watch it. It just shows you what TNA is now meaning all over the world. Nice counter right there by Lethal. Is Oh, he yeah. snapped off the Hurricane Rana right there. Yeah, you're right. First, it was the shoulder block that rocked Shelly. And then he caught him in the Hurricane Rana. Watch Jay Lethal. Is he going to fly? Look at this. Oh, he goes right through. Right through. I think he took it by surprise there. Alex Shelly thought he was going over the top. And he dives right through the rope. Suicide dive by Jay Lethal. Connects. Shelly out of the arena floor holding on to his knee. Shelly going to try and fight back. But Lethal's got a boot for him and now going to toss him back into the ring. Let's take another look. Man, what a, what a smooth move right there. Just fearless. As you can see, Alex Shelley looking up. And then he surprised him and cut the time in half. High impact move as we come back live. Here's the cover. Here's two. And no, Shelley still has the strength in his legs, despite the injury to his knee, to kick out and avoid the three count. I'm wondering if Alex Shelley's a little preoccupied in his mind. I mean, we saw earlier on where Jeff Jarrett in the pre-show told him and Eric Young to be looking for Sting. And, and you wonder if that's what he's thinking about because he doesn't want to let the king of the mountain down. It's obvious that the momentum's in Jay Lethal's favor. I think you're right. I think it's got to affect the focus of Alex Shelley and obviously Eric Young, who's going to be involved in a matchup later at Destination X. They've been sent on a mission by the king of the mountain. Jeff Jarrett told him he wants some kind of proof. He wants to know whether Steve Borden is here or whether Sting is a quitter. And he's expecting Shelley and Young to provide that proof as, oh, man, Alex, Shelley, both boots directly across the face and eyes of Jay Lethal. And that's what I'm talking about with Alex Shelley, things you don't expect. You, you never saw that coming, where he just literally just rakes both feet right over his face. Everything unconventional with this guy. Wow, stiff kick that time by Shelley, directed into the ribs of Jay Lethal. Check this out, submission hold now. Oh. He's got his arm hook. He's got his leg extended across the head and neck of Jay Lethal. Shoulders of Shelly actually down for a one count. Lethal gonna oh, wait a minute. through the pain. He's got him too. Oh. Lethal shoulders down for a near fall. I'll tell you some Alex Shelly measures his opponents up. He does it so methodical. He's not worried about, about putting an all out effort and running out of steam. Oh, nice jawbreaker there by Jay Lethal. Now stops the offense of Shelly, but he comes right back and Drilled him in the head with the enziguri. Alex Shelley right now. Every time Jay Lethal seems to be getting it going his way, Alex Shelley finds a way to turn it back in his favor. And again, I like how he does this. He keeps Jay Lethal grounded. He doesn't let Jay Lethal use his quickness and his speed to come at him. He keeps him where he wants him at all times on the mat. Really is a perfect game plan for Alex Shelley, who if you recall, Don, when we were introduced to the paparazzi cam, we just thought it was all a part of his scouting strategy, and I, I guess it was for the first several months. Forearm shot by Lethal Rocks, but Shelley comes right back and decks him with the clothesline. Almost turned him inside out right there. Going Cover, for in. two, no. A little nonchalant. He was a little too nonchalant right there. A little cocky on Alex Shelley's part. But boy, we have seen the paparazzi cam of Alex Shelley really evolve over the course of the past couple of months to the point where, yes, it invaded the privacy of Steve Borden to the point where he promises that he will get retribution. Let's face it, Steve Borden knows, yes, Alex Shelley, he may be the guy that's holding that paparazzi cam, but he knows, and you know, and everybody at home knows that Jeff Jarrett is really the man behind it. The funny part is, is Jeff Jarrett, if the king of the mountain would have left well enough alone, he wouldn't be worried right now about Steve Borden coming in, but the paranoia of Eric Young caused him to send Shelly out there with the Shelly cam, and now he's looking over his shoulder every chance he's got. Oh, what a kick! High hip toss, drop kick from in tight. Lethal kicks right back up to his feet. Listen to this crowd. This crowd has fallen in love with Jay Lethal. Here at the, oh, but you can see 
a little back at you from Alex Shelley, getting him with the same thing that Lethal got him with earlier. Oh, but then the neck breaker and quick oh. reversal, suplex, bridge, two, no. This guy's 20 years old. It's just it's amazing. amazing. It really is. The experience that we've seen from Jay Lethal in just a couple of years that he's been a pro. But that time, maybe his lack of experience cost him. Drop kick into the knee, quick roll over. Side roll by Lethal. Got it. In. Two. two. He get it. Oh, no, just two. Wow. Wow. Jay Lethal just not stopping, letting his momentum carry him back over to where he actually had the pin on Alex Shelley. The World X Cup is coming to TNA. Teams from all over the world to compete. And yes, we know that Jay Lethal, he's gonna be a part of the US squad representing Team TNA. Positioned up on the top rope is Alex Shelley. Lethal, gonna go up to the top as well. Shelley gonna try and fight him off. What's he doing? It's high risk up there for Jay Lethal. If he can make it, wait a minute. Oh, but it worked in Alex Shelley's favor as the knee is placed. And from that distance, the pain has gotta be excruciating. Shelley measures him. Quick full Nelson. Wait, suplex. One, two, go. Oh, oh, come on. On the verge of victory, but unable to gain the all important three count. Jay Lethal. Yes, he's got the fans behind him. He's been so close on on two or three occasions for winning this match. Man, I thought that was over right there, Professor. I thought that was it, nail, done deal. But this kid just goes right back at him. Another suplex takeover by Lethal. Motions to the crowd that he's gonna go high risk. Jay Lethal heads to the top. Oh, that's why it's called high risk. Zero reward at this point as Shelly cut him off, and then you heard the slap. Oh, what a shot right there to the face of Jay Lethal. Alex Shelley, how quick he was coming off the mat to get right up there on him. I think he could tell that if Lethal hit that, it might be over. Now Lethal, gonna go back up top. Diving headbutt. Gonna go for the pin. Legs hook, two. No, not enough. Again, so Just close. the shoulder up. Frustration evident on the face of Jay Lethal. Coming so close to victory here on so many occasions, but Alex Shelley stays alive. Got him in the full Nelson. Looked like he was gonna try and take him over maybe for a dragon suplex, but it was blocked away. Oh, Shelley caught him with a vicious boot right in the gut. Oh, look at this. What a move as he climbs the rope. Sheridan, slice bread two. Got, got it. him. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner. Shelly gets the pin and the win. What a way to kick off Destination X, DW. What an absolute fantastic match as we saw the youth, the future of TNA right there, Mike. And hello once again, everyone, from ringside. It's Mike Tanay, joined by Don West. And Don, what a way to kick off Destination X. Two great X Division stars, the man behind the paparazzi cam. Yes, it was Alex Shelley scoring the win over Jay Lethal. But what a lineup we have in store for you tonight. Destination X, it's going to be huge. How about the eight-man tag team war? It's Jarrett, AMW, and Abyss against Rhino, Team 3D, and Ron the Truth Killing. It's Ultimate X. It's what we've been waiting for with these three. Samoa Joe defends against AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels. It's the first title defense for the new NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. Christian Cage puts the gold on the line against the challenge of the alpha male, Monty Brown, and in addition to that, anticipation, fever pitch, all throughout the impact zone. Don, all afternoon, we've heard the fans, we've heard the wrestlers talking about the return of Steve Borden, the man behind the legend sting. He promises retribution tonight against Jeff Jarrett. Well, he just, he, his privacy was invaded. He was trying to just kind of go off into the sunset, and they wouldn't allow it to happen. And Jeff Jarrett sending Alex Shelley out there, all it did was tick Steve Borden, sting off and he wanted to let Jarrett know it was personal. It was so personal, he wasn't coming back as Sting, he was coming back as himself, Steve Borden, and he was coming directly to Jeff Jarrett. Steve Borden realizes, yes, it was Alex Shelley that was holding that paparazzi cam, but he knows that it was Jeff Jarrett who really was the man behind that, the man who sent him on that mission. Well, we know that they've also been sent on another mission, we're gonna try and follow that as the evening progresses, but now let's send it to the back where Jeremy Borash is standing by with Team Canada. Take it, JB.
Well, it's a very busy night tonight here at Destination X for these gentlemen. Petey Williams later on tonight steps into the X Division four-way, and it's going to be Bobby Roode and Eric Young of Team Canada taking on the Naturals. Naturals, tonight you requested a match against Team Canada. And why? Because last night on Impact, you morons actually think that we cost you the match for the World Tag Team titles. Give me a break. Hey, JB, you want to see my imitation of the Naturals? <laughs> Look at this, we're the Naturals. We got screwed. Come on, Naturals. Do you really think you have to explain the concept of being screwed to five Canadians who every day of their life have to go up against 300 million ignorant, self-serving Americans? The fact is, you didn't get screwed. You didn't get the job done. And you won't tonight either. And you know something, Jeremy? The whole place is a buzz here all over TNA Wrestling. World X Cup 2006. Who's gonna be in it? Who's gonna win? Team Mexico, Team Japan, Team UK, Team Ireland, Team TNA, Team NWA. You know what? There's one name I think that's being left off the list. Can you figure out what it is? Can you figure it? It's Team Canada. Team the Canada. team that is synonymous with X Division greatness. A team that personifies Team Unity. So tonight, our captain, P.D. Williams, is gonna go out there in that four-way international X match, and he's gonna show that Canada doesn't just have a superior social security system, doesn't just have superior schooling, Hello, but we produce the greatest wrestlers in the world. And what a night it is for Canada, and JB, what a night it is for the wrestling world. Because tonight, we fleshed old Steve Borden the Stinger out, and just like Excuse the me, Stinger was ran yeah, off, so... Uh, me and Eric really gotta go, though. We gotta go find Sting, so... Uh, hey, hey, what, I don't, you got a match, Showtime. I know, my Canadian danger sense is going wild. Oh, I'm on a mission, and this is the best idea I've had yet. We're gonna find it, let's go, let's go. Showtime, Showtime. You had a good wait, idea. Wait, wait. A1, get ready, I guess you're in that tag match. No, I'm, not, I'm not wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, accompanied to the ring by Tracy from San Antonio, Texas, Maverick. seen a change of heart in recent weeks from Maverick Matt as we take a look at what went down very recently on our syndicated TNA Explosion show. Oh, we never saw this one coming. Bentley lays out Lance Hoyt with the super kick and then busted him wide open. Sent him into the steel steps, slammed that steel chair right over his head. No longer an opportunity for the Bentley bounce from Maverick Matt. And his opponent from Dallas, Texas, Lutz Hoyt! You want to tell the people about a ticked off Texan? You want to tell the people about six foot nine, 270 pounds of Lance Hoyt who's got revenge on his mind as Tracy and Maverick Matt head out to the arena floor? Tell him, DW. Well, I'll tell you, the situation was so bizarre as we showed him earlier. It was really the miscommunication where Lance Hoyt was in no way trying to, to screw Maverick Matt. But Matt didn't see it that way and, and took it on himself to personally attack Lance Hoyt. And I'm gonna tell you something. That's a big guy to try to tick off. That's a big guy to try to make an enemy. I don't know what the Maverick's thinking right there. I mean, if you think about it, this name, the Maverick Matt Bentley, it's exactly what that kind of a move would, would imply. Someone who's a Maverick, Don, is gonna take matters into his own hands. But now Lance Hoyt, oh, big attempt at that press slam over his head. Maverick Matt able to avoid being dropped down, though, as well as the clothesline, oh. but that's a high back body drop, brother. Boy, you got that right. Here comes Lance Hoyt, oh, running clothesline. Sent him uh, right out into the rail, right there in front of the St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> You're right, bounced him right off the steel guardrail, and yeah, you talked to him during the pre-show. You see David Eckstein down there, Scott Spezio, Jim Edmonds, members of the St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah, they're in the VIP row. Can you blame them? No. It's a TNA pay-per-view, my God! I, of course you're gonna be here. I talked to Maverick, and I, and I asked him, what is going through your mind? Why would you do this? And I think he, he saw a situation where the exhibition had become about Daniels and AJ and Joe and the youth and Jay Lethal and Chris Saban, and I think, he wanted people to realize
Price, he's a former champion. He wanted to be noticed. And what better way to get noticed than to do that? And, and what another way to get noticed? What, and, what were you talking about? Yes, sir. He obviously. Distraction by Tracy. Oh, but he was. He didn't fall for it. No, not at all. Almost as if Big Lance had eyes in the back of his head. And the ticked off Texan drops Bentley with that clothesline. He's got more willpower than I do. I can tell you that. Uh, me as well. What, what were you talking about? Oh, the poop by Bentley catches. Hoyt as he comes in and then he drills him with a right hand and again right into the top of the head. Series of shots. Of course, it was the steel chair and the steel steps that opened up Lance Hoyt. You saw the blood when we took a look at that explosion situation between these two and now he's got him throttled. Oh, but Maverick, Matt, cuts him off and the Maverick drills him with kicks directly into the knees. That's the way to tie. Oh, I was gonna say that's the way you take down somebody six nine. Instead, the big slam leads to a near fall. Maverick Matt has really been so sharp in his game plan out there. He, you saw him duck the boot. You saw him every time that, that Lance White went for the choke slam, he cut him down at the knees. But that time, that power slam right there by Lance White was too much. Whoa. Telegraph of the back body drop, and it what really cost him. The Maverick caught him with the kick, but here's the side slam as he winds him up. Bow! Ben powers him down. Here's the pin. One, two. What kind of a brilliant plan do you think Showtime Eric Young has? We saw in the Team Canada interview just prior to this matchup, Eric Young, Alex Shelley being sent on a mission by Jeff Jarrett to try and track down Sting. I, I'm not sure about Eric Young having any kind of a, a master plan, are you? Eric Young is so worried about Sting appearing that I don't think he could concentrate on a master plan long enough. Oh, oh nice move right there by Maverick Matt. Oh, you're right. Neck breaker from the middle rope. Drops Big Lance. Wow, just when it looked like Lance Hoyt was going to be able to put Maverick Matt away. The Maverick caught him with that spinning neck breaker. Wow, from the middle rope. Hoyt tries to fight back from the canvas, but Matt catches him first with the elbow drop and then with the leg drop. Maverick Matt has had a wonderful game plan in this situation. He has, he has not been intimidated by the size, the height of Lance Hoyt. He has had his, his motives and his plans. And look at this, he goes for a pin right there. And you can see he's focusing his attack on the head and neck of Lance Hoyt. A series of neck breakers has Lance really on the defensive, the knee, then the follow elbow to the back of the head. Matt Bentley, former X Division champ, He's in control. Well, you said it right there, former X Division champ. Here's the guy that has been in big money bouts. Here's the guy that's had the title on the line. He, he, he knows what to do in the middle of a pay-per-view, especially one with the crowd in a friendly like this one is here at Destination X. And I think that's where he's got the major advantage on Lance Hoyt. This is where he's taken control. This is where the Maverick has taken advantage of this matchup. Keeping six foot nine, 270 pounds of Lance Hoyt down on the mat. Big Lance gonna try and get back up to that vertical base and does, now reels off right hands. That's the third one right into the gut and then just drives him right back into the corner. Oh, you go with pure power if you're Lance Hoyt right there. You just go at him with pure power and look at that. Use your tight to your advantage and what a distance. Maverick Man traveled to hit the ground. With one arm. He took him, went, he took him overhead with one arm and just powered him right down to the mat. And you can hear the crowd getting behind Big Lance Hoyt. The, the extension that he got on Maverick Matt there was absolutely unreal. Both men slowly making their way back up to their feet. First shot is by Maverick Matt, but it didn't connect. Oh, but Big Lance fighting back, punctuates it with the clothesline that dropped him. Double sledge to the chest. Follows up in the corner. Gonna try and shoot him across and does and back first. And there's the follow-up move. It's the running Lariat. Again, using his size, his power, his strength. The longer this goes, if he can keep it closed in, I think it's gotta be advantage Lance Hoyt. You can see him. Oh! Just put him straight up with that move. What a shot, what a kick. Caught him right in the rib cage. And then he just yanked on the ropes. It brought Maverick back into the ring. Doubled him over that time. You're gonna go pump handle here. Big Lance gonna try and take him up. He's got him from the shoulder. Oh, powers him right down to the mat. Here's the one, win. two, it's got, oh! I thought it was academic. Maverick Matt showing some
massive intestinal fortitude right there and kicking out. Wow. Well, that's, it's usually the case when he hits a move like this. Oh my goodness, you want to see high risk? This From 6'9", 270. Top rope moonsault, nobody home. This took a little too long in that, giving the Maverick just enough time to get out of the way. And he's setting him up for that super kick, but he misses. Measures him, went for that Texas Tower Bomb, I'm sure, but he was able to float over. And instead, Maverick Matt just powered him down. JB, where's Jeremy Borash at? What are you talking about? Pitch it to JB. We're in the middle of a match. Well, guys, you would not believe this, but if you're going to look for Sting, you're going to come up and look at the rafters. We have ventured up 50 feet, 50 something feet above the ring while this match is going on. What? And Alex Shelley and. You're kidding me. Alex Shelley and Eric Young are up here in the rafters, and if you're going to look for Sting, this is the place to do it, guys. What are you doing? Shh, Jeremy Borash, be quiet. This is my best plan ever. Get out of here. What do you got? What do you have in the box? What the hell's going on What's here? What's he got oh, in the God, box? Very unusual. He's what, what, throwing things What down is this? Box. There's like flyers or something coming down. What in the world? What's the story They're here? They're all the way up at the top of the impact zone. We're right in the middle of a match. All of a sudden, they tell me in my headset, pitch it to JB. He's up in the rafters. What in the world? His best plan, yeah, I gotta get a hold of one of those things. Wait a minute. So Cal Val, if you could get me yeah. one of those, grab me one of those. But what, what Tracy's Tracy, showing it to showing it to Maverick Matt. I've got one in my hand, it's a picture of Steve Morton. Says, have you seen this man? Boy, and use extreme caution, do not approach. If you see Steve Morton, contact Jeff Jarrett immediately. Lance Hoy! Oh. Well, there you can see the, the fire right there. Use extreme caution. Do the, that, that, what Wait, this best plan wait, is. JB's already in the back. We're going to send it to JB with Rhino, the truth, and Team 3D. Man, he's quick. Thank you very much, John and Mike. These four gentlemen tonight will step into battle against America's Most Wanted, Abyss, and Jeff Jarrett. You know what? Tonight's going to be a war. We wouldn't have it any other way. The scars on my body are a reminder that my past wars are real. And tonight, you will find out why they call me the War Machine. Brother Ray? Forget about Destination X. Tonight, it's Destination War. Jeff Jarrett, my man Ron Killings, is gonna take the King of the Mountain and throw him right over the top. Abyss. You are looking at the war machine, the man that will gore you straight to hell. And America's most wanted, we have not forgotten about you. Me and my brother Devon will not sleep until we beat your asses and become the NWA Tag Team Champions. Tonight is about death. Tonight is about taxes. Tonight is about tables. But most of all, tonight is about war. Now you can get with this, or you can get with that. You better come get with this, cause this is where it's at. What's up? <laughs> oh my brother, testify! Dude, you have to teach me abonics. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, the following tag team contest is scheduled for one fall, introducing first. Representing Team Canada and accompanied to the ring by Coach Jim Moore and A1. They are the team of Eric Young and the Canadian Enforcer, Bobby Roo! He's jumping! He's so jumping! He's standing everywhere! There's the man behind the frame score. He's a little jumpy. He's a little jittery. He's showtime. Young, and there's no yeah, way joined by it. Team Don't Canada's die. Canadian yeah. enforcer, Bobby Roode. Tag team action. They still haven't found Sting. Flyers or not? What mind game, Sting? Steve Morton is playing with these guys right now. They don't know which way's up. 
for which way's down. And their opponents, total combined weight 438 pounds, Chase Stevens and Andy Douglas. Ooh, that's wrong. Well, they've worn tag team gold in the past. Stevens and Douglas, the natural, former NWA World Tag Team title holders, and the Canadians cost them the championship belts on impact. There's not a question in my mind. And this matchup is the grudge match. As a result of that, the Canadian coach, Scott DeMore, had big windbag. Get him out of here. Concentrate on what's going on in the ring. We ain't no candy. Somebody tell DeMore that there's a free buffet in the back and we can get him away from the ringside area. All you can eat in the back, Tally. That's absolutely correct, and they're, they're a team that has been back on the rise. It's a proud team. Absolutely. A team that has held those belts on a few occasions, and they're going right now to get their revenge on Team Canada, and I, I believe this is a great night for the Nationals, especially with Eric Young. How is Eric Young going to be a factor in this match? He's seeing Sting everywhere. He's jumping at every little thing that happens. Well, he's been no help to his partner here. Double team move by the Nationals. Leads to an ear fall on the Canadian enforcer, Bobby Roode. Of course, when you deal with Team Canada, you've always got to be watching around ringside. Not only is the coach Scott Gamore positioned on one of the six sides, but also it's that big muscle man, A1, as well. He's out there. So you're looking at a four on two situation. I mean, we come to expect it from the Canadians. Well, they always make sure they have the numbers advantage, but earlier there was an incredible, incredible hip toss by Eddie Douglas. Getting it right there with that great arm drag, and look at him just pulling on the arm. Young back up to his feet. Tag is in. Stevens now legal. Double team by the Naturals. Double necktie move. Stevens cover on Young. Only a two count on Showtime. I think Showtime is the guy they've got to focus on. He's the guy they got to focus on getting either, either pinning him or making him submit. The Canadian Forcer seems to be more focused on the match, and of course. Eric Young's more, more determined to get flyers sent out to the crowd so that they can help him find Sting. Andy Douglas fights back. Big right hands that rock Eric Young. Quick reversal shot up into the rope. Outside it was Bobby Roode that time, who hooked the leg, who clipped him from outside, and now momentum switches to Team Canada. That's think, what they do. Think that. I mean, we just called him Showtime Eric Young. Then here's the backbreaker from Young. Let's follow this action. Pin, two, no. From the second that his nickname was even brought up, I'm thinking back weeks ago, Showtime, and the fact that Sting for years always announced his entrance by saying, it's Showtime. That's really what in my mind started the seeds of doubt that Eric Young planted in the mind of Jeff Jarrett. Well, he even asked not to be called Showtime Eric Young anymore. He didn't want to do anything that might tick off Sting. But right now, he has got to concentrate on the naturals. And the Canadian forcer Bobby Roode is completely focused, and you've got to give him that as he goes for the pin. This guy's got so much talent. It, it, it bothers me when I see him with Scott Demore out there and, and all the shenanigans that they pull all the time because you look at a Bobby Roode and you think, under the right tutelage, oh. this guy could go all the way. I mean, he's so technically sound. You're right, Don. It's, it's one of those things where when you see Team Canada, you see a Bobby Roode and you see a Petey Williams will be involved in an X Division matchup later here tonight at Destination X. And you realize just how great they are as professional wrestlers, but boy, their choice of, of associates really sucks. Boy, you couldn't have said it any better than that. But Andy Douglas had a nice reversal right there, and now giving it to Barry Stevens, and Chase Stevens taking control. And look at this. Oh, one right after the other, and it sends the Canadian Forcer outside of the ring. Rude out to the floor after the atomic drop. Action in the ring. Here comes Eric Young. No. Chase Stevens just away, just a diamond. Eric Young tangled up in the ropes right there. Got his leg hooked oh. on that top rope. Wow. Wow. 
He just punted him right in the gut. And that was a pretty rough landing. Oh, we're again talking about rough landings. Oh, man, what a thud. What a shot. Obviously, the Nationals were watching the match previous to this as they did the same thing. That Lance Hoyt did it with that big boot, and man, it worked. And as you can see, Eric Young tumbling outside, trying to get his bearing. Oh, trying to regroup, but fired out to the floor. Chase Stevens missed him, and here comes Gamore. That's the cheap shots we're talking about right there. And here comes Bobby Roode as well. Gonna toss Stevens into the ring, directed into his tag team partner. And here's the opportunity for Showtime to put him away. Two, wow, didn't even get the two count. It has swung back though into the, the favor of Team Canada always, though by some means. Yeah, because and of foul one, play, outside like, interference. Absolutely. Talking about Scott DeMore going in there and interfering and see Eric Young trying to get the pin, Chase Stevens getting the shoulder up. I have to admit, in the early going of this matchup, I, I could see where Showtime Eric Young was preoccupied with his mission to track down Sting. But boy, ever, ever since he's been into this matchup, he's really been able to focus on the task at hand. Bobby Roode in now with Chase Stevens. You know, maybe it's good for him, good therapy, to get himself concentrating on doing what he does, and that's Russell. Cover, Roode, no. Just the two count on the Naturals, Chase Stevens. Maintains his grip, maintains the contact at the head of Stevens, who extends his hand across. Gonna try and get the fresh man, Andy Douglas, into the battle. But Bobby Roode, the Canadian enforcer, just not gonna let it happen. Oh, look at the power right there of Bobby Roode. It's just... Oh, he's so well-rounded to wrestle. Him. He is! You know, we talk about it so many times, and we don't want to beat a dead horse with it about how good these guys are without Scott Demore, but as a team, no matter how you look at it, love them or hate them, they always find a way to get the job done. Mid-rope knee drop leads to just another near fall. Team Canada not able to put the Naturals away. Tag is in. Legal man now, Eric Young, who drives the boot right into the chest. Eric Young, you, you said it, you said it earlier, he has turned, he's got his focus on the task at hand, into the ring. I mean, that's I what you've got to do, so. you've just got to let your emotions Take part when you're out there and what you do. Another right hand. That one jacked the jaw of Chase Stevens. Young just grabs Stevens right by the head. Gonna take him over, yes, to the Canadian side of the ring. No shock there. And now putting all of his weight well, right on the back of the head oh, the wait, neck look at this. of Stevens. Pulling back on it. Holy cow, the referee is not seeing it and he's just pulling the back of the neck. Pulling it. This the opposite way it's intended to go, and oh, Jay yeah. Steven. See that big clown at ringside, that big load to more. So proud, so happy, cheering on Team Canada. The outside interference by Bobby Roode, and now the Canadians, boy, they are in the driver's seat. You really have a lot of, a lot of strong feelings about this. You think? <laughs> After all the crap that we put up with from Demore and Team Canada for the past couple of years, you blame me? Not at all. I mean, I've been seeing this hyped up in a long time. I love it. I love the fact that you can say it like it is. Probably that second Red Bull I had. From his knees, Chase Stevens is going to try and fight back, but he's cut off in mid-move by Bobby Roode. You can see Chase Stevens doesn't know where he is. He's just swinging violently, trying to hit anything. Is trying to catch somebody wearing red out there, hoping that they could connect long enough to get a tag in to Andy Douglas, and he's going to have to get a tag in here real quick. Uh, and oh, yeah, yeah. And you know what? Right by Eric Young. Eric Young was thinking the exact same thing that you were, and he just dropped Douglas down to the floor because of it. Stevens, he's been beaten on for several minutes in here. Going to dig down deep, shoot Eric Young, who amazingly. Able to land on his feet on the apron after being turned upside down in the corner. You can see Andy Douglas just goading him, saying, come down here. He's got some Eric kind of a plan here. You can see it. Canadians trying to lure Douglas in. Stevens still legal in the ring. Eric's so proud of himself. Chase going to try and fight back from inside the ring. Listen, I've never seen this cockiness out of Eric Young in a while. Oh, what a kick to the back of the head by Stevens. And he just falls, flops to the back. That was a hell of a drop to the floor after he was drilled in the back of the head with the kick. Let's take another look. Look at this shot. And it's like the tree coming oh, down. Look wow, out below. What a distance. Fantastic. That's what Chase Stevens had to do. Demore directing traffic. Sends the big muscle man, A1, over to the far side to try and get Eric Young back up to his feet. 
Going to try and get him back in, I guess. Referee putting in the count. What are they doing here? Oh, I see. Bring him over to your side so we can tag in Bobby Roode. Smart plan. Yeah, I was just going to say, strategy makes sense. Smart plan. Did you oh, see what the Canadian enforcer did? Didn't he nails Andy Douglas, then pulls Chase Stevens back over to the corner of Team Canada so that Chase Stevens can't get the tag in. Oh, man, the Naturals were so close to getting Douglas back in, which is the key. Let's face it, if the Naturals, if they stand any chance against Team Canada, you've got to get Andy Douglas in. All oh, the fresh man, and here he goes. Good move by Chase Stevens going under the legs. Sights set on the Canadian Enforcer. Oh, Duck in the knee. first line, high knee, caught him in the chest. Running clothesline, took him down, and another lariat drops him in his tracks. Andy Douglas was so frustrated outside the ring there, not being able to get in, knowing what he was going to do once he did, and he is, oh, just taking that plan to perfection right there as he's just catching everybody. So you're right, just nailed him. With all of that pent-up frustration. Look at this! Whoa, what a DDT right there! Here's the cover! One, two, got it! No, oh, come on! Twisting, tornado-style DDT, dropped Rude on his head, but could not put him away. Young back in. He just, he can't even stand. He can't even keep his balance. Oh, this is, oh, this nice kick to the face right there by Chase. Ah, nice <laughs> elbow. Tiving elbow right to the chest of Eric Young by Andy Douglas. That's the naturals we know how they used to, oh, but look at the power Full of the Canadian Nelson Enforcer. slam. Planted him in the middle of the ring. Big boot by Douglas. Double underhook. Double arm DDT. Cover. Here's one. Here's two. He's got it. Nope. Just in time. I mean, you talk about just getting the shoulder up in time. Twice he went to the DDT. Different variations, both times. Just the two count for the Naturals. Going to take him up. Oh, man, Eric Young from behind clubbed him. Bobby Roode got dropped on his head. They have a knack of getting there just when they have to, yeah. just before the damage is going to be done. And now they've double got team. Jay Stevens double teamed over here. Andy Douglas can get there in They're time. Try and double team superplexing. Look at this. Ah! Wow, what a move. What a move. Tower yeah. of Doom superplex. Guys, is there any way we can take another look? And you, you better tell me yes. I'll tell you what, Andy Douglas sacrificed his partner right here, but he was able to get the oh. two Canadians at the same time. Now the Naturals can get the win. We're back live at Destination X. No. Damn, just a two count. So close. Andy Douglas, though, what a move right there. He had to sacrifice his own partner. But that's the that's how you do it out Natural there. Natural disaster coming. They get it. Their famous double team move that's gained him so many victories. Steven's going to position him up. Oh, uh -oh. Right. Eric Andy Douglas Young. got held yeah. in. Oh, uh -oh. again, the distraction. Andy Douglas not where he's supposed to be. Canadian flag wrapped in the hockey stick. And he right over his he head. The stick right over the head. Oh, this was wrong. No, no. Ladies and gentlemen, your winners, Team Canada! The Naturals were screwed out of the NWA Tag Titles by the Canadians on Impact, and Coach DeBoer and the troops from north of the border, they used that hockey stick again to get another victory. Team Canada, Bobby Roode, Showtime Eric Young with the victory at Destination X to the back JB and the alpha male Monty Brown. Thank you very much, John and Mike. Tonight, this man, the alpha male, Monty Brown, the biggest match of your career, Christian Cage for the World Heavyweight Championship. The biggest match of my career, the biggest match of your career too, Christian Cage. Tonight, the alpha male gets his respect. And how am I gonna get it, Jeremy? By taking it, taking it directly to you, taking it to you on my hunting grounds. Welcome to my Serengeti, flavor of the minute. Flavor of the month, you are looking at the flavor of the millennium, the flavor of the future, and the future starts tonight, Christian. Because I could be covered from head to toe with doorknob, Christian Cage, and you still couldn't handle the alpha male. And I'm going to show you how it goes down tonight, Christian Cage, because you, on top of feeling all those butterflies in your stomach, are going to feel something else. You will feel the... Monty! Monty, I'm glad I found you. Look at it, I know this is a big night for you. I just want you to know for sure that the championship committee, TNA upper management, has guaranteed a level playing field. Earl Hebner is gonna be on the job, and tonight will be a situation where the best man wins, and I wish you the best of luck. Ouch!
up. I don't want your handshake. I don't care about TNA management. I don't care about your referee, Earl Hebner. And I really don't even care about you. Tonight, the playing field will be leveled by the alpha male. And you know how I'm going to level it? I will level the playing field with the Pouncer. Period. Estamos representando a la raza, los latinos. You son of a bitch. That was my daddy. Estamos cansados que no nos den nuestro lugar. And if you didn't understand what that meant, that ain't for you anyway. That's for la raza. instead of a referee, but it won't be the bullets last right being red. Ladies and gentlemen, Destination X continues with the following one fall six man tag team contest. Introducing team number one, Homicide, Machete, and Conan. They are the Latin American Exchange. several months, the opportunity to see Bullet Bob Armstrong, the father of B.G. James, gain a little bit of revenge on these street thugs, the LAX, the Latin American Exchange. Well, everything they do, hey, wait a minute, well, let's go. Yeah, yeah, we no la tenemos miedo a nadie. Yo, Bullet Bob Armstrong, AKA Dinosaur Bones. I hate you, we hate Kip James, we hate BG, we hate these fans, and we hate this city. What are you really we trying hate to say? the fact that every month they keep putting up against you scrubs. Tonight, we end your misery. Orale, arriba la raza. Oh, you didn't know. And their opponents. First, Kip James and BG James. They are the James Gang. And their tag team partner from Marietta, Georgia, Bullet Boop Armstrong. You ready to see what a 66-year-old man can do? Yeah, BG's got the stick. Gonna bring the James Gang down, along with his daddy. Bullet Bob Armstrong. I hope I'm in half that shape when I'm 66 years old. Well, I don't want to say anything. But, but <laughs> when you're 66, <laughs> hope I make it to 66. I was, I was going to say that. Cut the music. All right. Well, well, that's something to be proud of. You see, tonight, don't feel too much. Like no time for no funny catchphrases. Tonight is fight night. See, what you boys did was you pissed off the tribal elder. Yeah. Well, when the elder ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. 
So this evening, you punks learn a valuable lesson that blood runs thicker than mud, you punk bitches. It's on. It's on. It's all about family. It's all about revenge. It's all about taking care of business. And look at this. I mean, Bullet Bob's got one person in his sights. One person, and that's Conan. Bullet Bob Armstrong broke into the wrestling business. You ready for this? In 1962. Check out those. I wasn't even born yet. Check out the wrestling boots that Bullet Bob is sporting tonight. 30 year old wrestling boots. Hell those. And they got the bullets right on the side that formed the B. Hell those boots are older than half the wrestlers on the TNA roster. Trying, as you see Andrew Thomas, trying to restore some kind of order so that we can have a match instead of a street fight, which is exactly what LAX wants. They want this thing to break down. Yeah, but you heard what BG James said. It's not a night where it's about catchphrases. It's a night to gain a little revenge. Remember, it was LAX, you saw it in the video package, that put Bullet Bob Armstrong in the hospital. What? The, the thugs attacked him. They broke his kneecap. Had to have knee surgery, and tonight's the night for revenge. You can see the emotions, how high they're running. Kip James right now being told to get back, and BT though goes right out after him. He throws homicide back into the ring. BT James looks like a man on a mission himself. Oh, my set day catches him from behind. Remember every time that you see LAX? Oh, and man, nice he shot was by homicide. by homicide. You've got to keep your eyes on Conan, and that, that six slapjack that he uses. Oh, he's got it right there in his pocket, too. I can see it. You can, can you really see yeah, it? Yeah, it's hanging right out of his pocket right there. Did you hear it when it slammed onto the desk recently on Right Impact? there, see it? See it right there? Of course you can see it. Oh, look at the double team. In the ring, it's Machete. Outside, it's K-Dog with a double team on BG James. And here comes Kip and the Bullet. Wait a minute. Uh, Andrew Thomas said that the tag wasn't made. He's got to get it him back. There was no tag. I know, obviously. but Kip James just wants to fight. He just wants to get out there. Andrew Thomas over story order. Yeah, but from outside, while Andrew the Thomas has his back turned, you see that Homicide and Conan have BG hooked while Machete delivers the offensive blows in the ring. You know, you have in your mind a plan set, and I know that BG and Kip and Bullet Bob did, and now BG turning it back around. His experience showing forth. Again, though, he turned his attention away. Machete made him pay. Just that split second of distraction cost him. And then Machete drills him in the side of the head with the boot. Oh, you can see how oh. frustrated Kip James is. And he's making the tag sound, and Andrew Thomas doesn't realize it because he's over there. Kip James is blowing a gasket over there. Here comes another one of Conan's thugs. Homicide in. Homicide in Machete. From Conan from outside, they're just beating the hell out of BG. him out to the middle of the ring now and snap him down. Hangman's neck breaker, gonna go for the cover. Here's two, BG barely got the shoulder roll. You know, we, we forget in all this, but we see the street thug and homicide and the things that he does. What a good wrestler he is. Somebody that, that has so much potential. Somebody that's been talked about before he came here for a long time. Fans of the impact zone trying to cheer on BG James, trying to get him back up to his feet. I mean, Beach, he's, he's got to get one of the fresh men in, whether it's his dad or whether it's Kip. What a knee to the back of the head right there by Homicide. And just goes over there and rubs it in Bullet Bob's face. But, I mean, he just ground it in the back, and they pull again a knee to the face to BG James. They have just kept BG James on this side of the ring. He's been isolated the entire match. Absolutely not getting any chance to make a tag. Homicide. Oh, homicide throw. Went for oh, BG, what a counter. Yeah, went for the Tornado DDT, shrugged off by BG. Oh, man, what a collision. That just shows you what BG James brings to the table, that experience. It looked like Homicide was going to have his way with him right there. BG able to spring out of it just long enough, but then after the mid-ring collision, everybody is down on the mat. BG slowly making his way. Over to his side. There you see the tag into Machete. Tag in, and now it's Machete and Kip James who are legal. Look at Big Kip unloading those rights. Oh, he was so frustrated over there. He wanted in that ring so bad, and he's gonna take it out on both of them. Whoa! Six, oh, that's 6'5", 260. That just drilled Machete in the corner, measuring him. Dave, oh, just dared him to come out, but he turned his back.
back on Homicide, and he paid. Well, BG James saw Homicide take the cheap shot, and BG James went right after him. I mean, right oh! BG also top there and nails Homicide in the rail one. The double sledge caught him right here at the broadcast table. Get a shot. Oh! Right on the table, right here in front of us. BG James exacting it from in, as you can see it right there. Just and drilled him head first right into the broadcast position. BG getting revenge. Look at the bullet. Blitz. Look at bullet Bob. Just drilled Conan. It's tough to keep our eyes on this. Oh, he takes Conan right into the steel step. That's a 60 oh, wow. shot by Bullet Bob. 66 year old man. Bullet Bob. And he's not done with him yet. Oh, in the ring, you see BG James. Take off Machete trying to counter, but BG and oh, Conan took some wicked shots right here in front of him. Chair, chair, chair shot. He Brett, Conan's screaming, he's got brass knuckles. The hell he does. There's the chair right in the face. Oh, it's hard to keep track of the action. We're going to try and follow it. We got bodies all over here at the broadcast table. Bodies flying out of the ring. And now, the James Gang and their father, they've got their sights set on Machete. Oh, what a right, oh, look at this, three on one. You talk about isolated. Bullet Bob gives him right into Kip James, feeds him to him. Ready for a little, oh, look at this. Very boat ride, baby. Pin him, count along, two, done. Ladies and gentlemen, your winners, the James Gang. Six-year-old man to take care of business. Hell, Bullet Bob Armstrong shows up, and the James Gang and Bullet Bob just knocked off the LAX. You gotta love it. Oh, what a fantastic showing right there by Bullet Bob Armstrong, and the James Gang finally, finally get their revenge. Well, they are men on a mission looking for Sting here. Alex Shelley. Alex Shelley and Eric Young. They're gonna blow our covers. Down to this. Uncle Jeff is gonna be so proud. Wait, stay here. Is he still in there? Yeah. Okay, go on. All right, we're going in. We're going into the bathroom here, backstage. Look, I told you. His jacket. Come on. Okay, Stan. Come on out of there. We got the whole place surrounded. And we don't want no trouble. Uh oh. What are you doing? What are you doing? Where's Sting? Is he in there with you? No, he's not in there with me. Well, what's his bat and his coke doing in here? Uh, when I came in, it was sitting right there. <laughs> and what are you guys doing in here? Huh? Together? Mm hmm? Yeah. Oh, uh, Shelly. The camera work you're doing? Yeah. It's gonna get you hurt. Knocking him right on the ground and stopping one of them. We're close, we're close. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is a four way international X match. The wrestler who scores the first pinballer submission will be declared the winner. Introducing the participants first, accompanied to the ring by A1 and representing Team Canada. Canada to be involved in the worst way in the upcoming World X Cup. We always love what the World X Cup brings, the showcase of X Division talent all over the world. And Petey Williams is somebody that's familiar with that whole concept. And remember, the Canadian Destroyer. From Tokyo, Japan, and representing New Japan Pro Wrestling, Puma! 21 years of age. He's been wrestling since he was 15, a six-year pro. The masked man from the new Japan Pro Wrestling Dojo in both Tokyo and in Los Angeles. 
Puma makes his way to the ring, yes, representing our sister promotion, our Associates of the Orient, New Japan Pro Wrestling. The third participant, representing India, Sean J. Dutt. The original, Leia from the Himalaya, from Bombay to TNA, here comes Sanjay. This guy, you're a poet, you didn't even know that you was one. Sanjay Dutt, one of those guys that is so exciting every time you see him in the ring because he can do a little bit of everything. We're three quarters of the way home. Here's the fourth man. And finally, from Hill, Michigan, Chris Saban. I love this international flavor. It's also what separates TNA from a lot of the other wrestling companies, if you think about it. The fact that we don't have any limits in the X Division and no limits when it comes to bringing in the top stars from all around the world. Put them on display in TNA. Let's find out who the best country is, who the best man is, and this is a little bit of a preview. What we've got in store for you upcoming in the months of April and May, the World X Cup. Oh, I love the World X Cup. There's another interesting dichotomy going on in this match right here with Sanjay Dutt and Chris Saban, two very good friends, two people that have worked together in the past. Tag but, team partners. Absolutely. And I mean, we, we saw them almost take AMW to the limit, almost win the tag title. Yeah, against all odds last month. But this is a situation with these two that because of this International X Cup, they have been forced to go against each other now for the second time here in, in just a short period. And it's interesting to see these two have to wrestle against each other. Backslide by Sanjay Dutt on the masked man, Puma. Oh, great quick arm drag. Look at this roll up, look how quick. Wow. Nice reversal right there, nice counter by Sanjay to also get a shot at it. Look at the speed back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> oh man. They had that baby going about 120 miles an hour, didn't they? Oh, Sanjay does. Uh, maybe the fastest wrestler I think I've ever seen at TNA. And we just saw Puma out there taking it stride for stride. See the blind tag from outside? Team Canada captain Petey Williams slapped the back of Sanjay Dutt. I mean, it's something you got to be aware of. You get too close to one of the six sides of the ring where there's another wrestler outside. They're going to tag in so that they can be a part of this. Well, that's the kind of match this is. You're forced sometimes to kind of play a little backhanded. You've got to. You can't afford to let somebody get a pin and get the win. You've got to jump in there sometimes and break it up. I mean, it's it's a whole different style of wrestling. You've got to have ice in the back of your head, and you cannot for one minute take your eye off the ball. You're looking at two former X Division champions in Chris Saban. Oh, man, and Petey Williams caught him with that arm drag. He's shooting quickly off into the ropes. What a chilly. Oh, look at this athletic ability out there in the ring. Poetry in motion. Arm drag sends him to the corner, but wow, Petey Williams gets both boots up right in the Saban's face. Missed him with the splash attempt. Cross body block didn't connect. Springboard drop kick on our Wow, and this is just what the X Division modifies right here. This sportsmanship, this athletic ability. And you know, I want to mention something about Petey Williams. We talked earlier about Bobby Rudin and how great he could be if under the right tutelage. Petey Williams is the same way. I think about him away from Scott DeVore and I think this is one of the, the greatest X Division champions we ever had. It's just that association that he has that brings him down in our book. And how about the Canadian Destroyer? Oh, the, 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 the move that, in my opinion, separates Petey Williams from everybody else in the X Division, the roll up on Saban. You talked about saving yourself. That's exactly what happened there. Sanjay in, pull the side this. roll. Who got it? Two, no. All four men in the battle because they know what's at stake here. First pin, first submission, gains on the win. Saban, wow, almost took down all three men with one move. Roll up, roll up. Oh, what a Sanjay kick rolling. right there by Sanjay, right wow. into the jaw. Again, that's where they're forced to have to go against each other, but they understand this. They understand the competitive nature of a match like this. A1 circles the ringside area, gives the Canadians that edge at all times as Sanjay snaps off the suplex. Quick pin attempt on Saban. See Saban favoring his back after he came crashing down, courtesy of the overhead move by Sanjay Dutt. One thing you always got to remember with Team Canada, they always try to find a way to get an edge. They always try to find a way to be one up on you. And you'll notice that A1 is out there with Petey Williams, and that's why Team Canada always makes sure they got a backup plan. If at any point in time referee Slick Johnson is turned away, look for A1 to try to cause some damage. Check this out. 
double underhook style submission hold that the legs, oh, legs hooked as well. Rolls over the shoulders of Saban are down for a two count as Puma almost put him away. Quickly back up to his feet. Saban just rushed him right into the corner. From outside, Petey Williams with another blind tag and puts the boots in. Wow, to Puma, tag was in. I guess he touched the back of Chris Saban, and now Petey Williams is legal. Well, you saw Chris Saban look at the referee and point like, you know, kind of like the guy that said I didn't foul. Kind of going, look at what he did. How can he get away with that? But hey, you get over there in that corner, you see he goes to the pin. It's a smart move to do. You can't win unless you're in the ring, and it was a smart move by Petey Williams. Puma back up to his feet. Reels off a series oh, of shots on that bench. Chops right into the chest of Petey Williams. What a smart move. Just took him down. Captain just drilled him with the drop kick in the knee. That's such a devastating move. You nail the knees like that. You send him going the other direction. And look at this. He's got that ankle placed right there. Rose, but Sanjay Dunn does the blind tag that time, and he gets himself in there. Good. Petey Williams did it two times. Turn about fair play. Gets Sanjay in as the legal man. Going to spring oh, back. How smooth. How Hit smooth the move that. All cover. No. Two count only. And these guys are athletes. Again, you can see A1 moving in the background back there. I don't trust him for a second. Oh. Nice kick to the face right there again by Sanjay. Trilly with the drop kick. Goes for the lateral press, but Puma rolls the shoulder at two. Right, right back up to his feet. Puma while Sanjay. Variation of the headlock there, the cravat move. Oh, but it's reversed in a great bolo-like forearm shot by Puma. Drops Sanjay Dutt. Tag in Petey Williams, drop kick. Right between the shoulder blades. Now, that was one of those moves, and hopefully it won't cost Puma, where he had to get himself out of there. He got kicked in the face. Obviously, he was dizzy, and he actually went over to Petey Williams to get the tag. And that's, that's one advantage you do have. But it can also be something that can go against you if, if, if somebody gets the pin. Sanjay hooks in the corner. Saban now legal. Oh, man, I love that hesitation drop kick. Like he is suspended in the air. Going to pull him back into the middle of the one, ring. Here's the cover. Two. Here's two. Nope. Yes, they were tag team Look partners. They were tag team partners. Oh, he just stops in oh. midair and then nails him. What a shot. What a move by saving him oh. out of the back of the head. Cut him with another kick. And another cover and another two count for saving on Sanjay. Got him neutralized here. Great positioning for Chris Saban. Slows down the action. Going to work on the, the lower back and the arms of Sanjay Dutt. Surfboard submission hold applied. Referee Slick Johnson checking to see if Sanjay going to be able to fight through that pain. Look at that. He's even using his head right there. Kind of to get some leverage, but Sanjay turning it into his favor. And look at this. Now he's got it, and now the arms are backwards for Saban. And now he puts him down to the mat and puts that knee right there into the back. Saban now, his chance to try and fight through that pain that we just saw earlier from Sanjay. Mirror images of these two men, yes, who were tag team partners last month and against all odds. But in this every man for himself four-way international X Division matchup, you see that, yeah, their opponents this month's at Destination X. Pin attempt here, Sanjay just another two count. On Saban, look out. Oh, right into the turnbuckles right there, Mike. Sanjay Dutt, now this is his chance to get Saban reeling, and oh man, just a knife edge chop, and you can hear it all the way through the building. Oh, goes right up into him and puts that hip right into the stomach. Flying hip attack into the into the chest of Saban. Tag in, Puma now legal. Well, Puma, oh, what a kick right there. And caught him from behind and just cut him down like a tree. And now Puma, he was able to get out of the ring earlier, catch his breath, smart move. It didn't hurt him on that move earlier on. Oh, oh nice kick to the back. Off the drop kick, here's the pin attempt. Puma cover, near fall on Saban. Puma's inspiration for professional wrestling. The original Tiger Mask from New Japan Pro Wrestling, Satoru Sayama. He tries to mirror many of the offensive moves that Tiger Mask, who really revolutionized the sport of professional wrestling back in the 1980s. I mean, Tiger Mask was X Division before anybody even thought about the X Division, and Saban just drilled him with a chop. Class was in session right there with the professor, ladies and gentlemen. Petey Williams on the offensive, the series of shots, and Saban face first into the corner, and look at Petey put the boots right into the gut. Just one shot right after another, and that's what you've got to do. These two know each other so well, you mentioned it earlier. These two former X Division champions, both 
training in the same area. That's now. the that key. the old Canada right there. And then what that does, though, is he applies that pressure right there in that groin area. And I mean, that excruciating pain. You can see it on the face of Chris Saban. That'll take the air right out of you. Don, you just made a great point. And it's something that, you know, we often point out when you see Saban and Petey Williams in the ring at the same time. You mentioned that they trained for professional wrestling at the same time, at the same school. They obviously, their careers have gone in divergent paths ever since then. But what they have in the back of their minds is the hours and hours of training that they had together. So they know each other's moves inside out. Chris Saban trying to fight with his feet. Nice elbow right there, and then one right after another. You just gotta do that to break the hold, and that's what it did, and it worked. Mid-ring exchange. Let's see who gets the better of it with these forearm shots. Oh, Swinging Puma, up by Saban. Head. Yeah, Puma in, he's now legal. Should be Puma and Petey Williams. I don't know if referee Slick Johnson saw the tag or not. Yeah, Puma's in. Oh, elevation, Saban headed oh. up to the apron. Petey Williams just dropped him down to the floor. Here comes Petey going right over the top. Oh, he catches up and then nails the hurricane going over him. Right there with the bat right wow. in the ring. What, what an athlete. What a, I'll, I'll give that to him. This guy is a phenomenal athlete. Look out, Puma! Oh, Puma catches both of them. Oh, you got to keep your eyes on Sanjay. Wait a minute, Sanjay, is he going to fly? Oh, wait, Puma come in to cut him off. Oh. And he cut him off at the pass. Just drilled him and decked him with the clothesline. Look at this. Here comes Puma. Watch how he hits both oh. of them right on the shoulders and it'll cause their heads to collide. Two for the price of one. Back live. It's Saban and Puma. Oh, he's caught. Like, like Spider-Man. Oh, look at that. Oh, what like, a move. Like Spider-Man. He just hooked the ropes. Saban, the look on his face, you can... <laughs> oh, he suicide dies, so he misses Puma, but he catches the Canadian Destroyer right in the head. Oh, man, what a strike. Look out. Here comes, Here comes Puma. Puma. Oh, again, he does a little acrobat. Oh, but he forgot about Sanjay Dunn. Turned his back on Sanjay. Got caught with the court with that drop kick. And now Sanjay, oh my, hit it. Oh, to the top floor. Look out below. Oh, what a beautiful boot so And he even landed on his feet. I'm just going to say that. That was one hell of a landing. Everybody's out. Look at this. Look how smooth he glides through the air. It takes out all three of them. Yeah, with the greatest of ease until he came crashing down into all three opponents. Saban tossed back in. Sanjay can feel it. Oh, but he's hooked from outside. Puma just dragged him right down to the floor. Now it's Puma's opportunity. Oh, wait a minute. Cradle shock. He's, oh, but he fights out of it. No, it was so close. Didn't get oh, the a Puma hook. Swing oh, 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 oh. to the back of the head by Puma. How impressive has he been? He shows he belongs. Side Russian leg sweep by Williams on Puma, but he got drilled in the back. Sanjay cut him with the ends Gary. What a kick in the face by Saban. What a match. What a match. You talk about international expedition action. And it's Man, best. you got what you paid for right there. Man, a lot. Slingshot in! Oh, what a kick by Saban! I mean, you can feel the force! And he just slings him back. Yeah, just snapped off the suplex! Oh, beautiful! Or can run a snap by Sanjay. They're tearing it up in this great four-way! Spinning neck breaker by Dot on Saban! Sanjay taken overhead by Petey Williams. Oh, the action just doesn't stop! And look at that move by Petey Williams right there! As he's got it! Oh, look at him pulling out! He's going for the sharpshooter! And he's got him! And that's a smart move. We pointed it out all during this matchup. It keeps him alive. Well, he had to. I mean, you could see when Petey pulled him back in the middle that eventually Puma was going to tap out. Sanjay Dunn telegraphed it. Oh, no. oh man. Great pay for it. Pitcher was great DDT. Oh, he's going to go for the destroyer. He's going to reel him in. That juice with the sign. He's got him. Put it Here in. Comes. Here he goes. Oh, wait a minute. Sanjay. He's countering it. Sanjay's countering it. Great move. Oh. Time. Just in time. And now the former tag partners look at each other. They come face to face and they exchange chops. Well, after the action they've gone through, it's all about.
about the competitiveness of this match, and they all want all oh, the power of Sabre. Take him up again. Oh, another one. Spinning power bomb. Two. Puma cuts it off just in time. Woo. Wow. Catch your breath. There goes Saban. Swinging a miss with the clothesline. Oh, he's going to get it. he set him up for the cradle shot. No. Oh. Up. Reversal. Puma. Look at those knees. Caught him with that one. And double underhook. Oh, took him overhead. Great counter by Puma. Pin. One, two. Oh, Sanjay got again in the split second. That would have been over. They've been so close to victory on so many occasions. But the saves at the last split second keep all four men alive. Sanjay lands on his feet. Petey Williams yep. just sends him out. No, he turned around a little too nonchalantly. Sanjay Dunn, baby, was going to go for the Canadian Destroyer, it looked like. It's that, oh, man, Petey Williams dropped him down throat first on that top steel cable. Here comes that sick flip by the Well, we've gathered up the finest soldiers in TNA. The Monster Abyss has Ooh. agreed to enlist in Jeff Jarrett's army Ooh. because these four men have been brought together by a common goal, to keep these infidels and outsiders from trying to take what rightfully belongs to us. Ooh. Now, sometimes in war, the only way to cut the losses is to break out the weapons of mass destruction. Ah! And tonight, Team 3D, Rhino, and Ron the Truth Killings, you are going to feel the power of this weapon of mass destruction, the monster abyss, the king of the mountain, Jeff Jarrett, and America's most wanted when we turn the impact zone into a slaughterhouse. Prepare for Doomsday. Sting, the hourglass is just about to time to run out. What's the verdict? What's the verdict, guys? Listen, we looked high, we looked low, we looked at the change rooms, we looked in the rafters, we looked everywhere. But we haven't found them yet, but we're gonna keep looking. You picked no, the no, right guy. No, 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 no. Sting, we're finished looking for you. Now it's time for you to find Jeff Jarrett. Sting, I'm going out there to the ring and I've got a bullseye on my back. And if you want me, show up and come get me. It's eight-man tag team war up next here at Destination X. War. Jeff Jarrett, America's Most Wanted and the Monster Abyss to face Team 3D, the War Machine Rhino, and Ron the Truth Killing. Eight-man war. Better bring the A game because the team that I got, we're going to show you what's up. The game plan is already set, and I'm going to eliminate four of my problems there. Yeah, you're gonna 
find out what's up. Look at the beat down there. Give it from the street killer. Ready 
for him, and it just become a brawl now as everything breaks up. There will be no boundaries on this war. Oh, man, what a suplex. Oh. Team 3D's brother Ray, the Tennessee Cowboy James Storm on one side, Killings and Jared on the other. Sit back and watch these eight beat the hell out of each other. Look at that. Oh, look at this. Remember this cut? Remember this oh, one? I have that, I have that visual He's of that core that sent up his for four tables. What's going on? He's got him up there. Now same listen. spot. The same spot. Right there by the Spanish and out table. Yeah, the moving them out. He's got the oh. truth. And he just bangs him right on top of that table. Share it and run the truth killings on the Spanish broadcast table. Share it lay in that right. Up above us here, the monster of Vince and Rhino battling. There's a fight up in the far side of the impact zone with Team 3D and AMW. And, and we haven't even got a fight. Brother D Bob and Walker Chris Harris. They're up in the stands on another side. You need Wait a minute. Oh, oh what God. a wicked chair shot right there by the war machine. Right about and the Holy crap. Hit him He's right in the head. The crap out of his head he right hit there. Hit him right in the head. Wow. This is the big crowd. Oh, Jared, he's got a chair. Oh, the truth. Look how wicked shot. St. Louis Cardinals players, they, they're standing as well. Inside Edmonds and Spezio on their feet. They've never really seen anything. Like this. If Tony LaRusso finds out they're sitting this close <laughs> to the action, he'll suspend them. Killings up. Oh, God, dropped down right across his throat or chest that time. Sharon just splashed him oh. in the rail. Oh, oh, the, who's that right there? Is that Storm? I think it's Storm. I, 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 we're going to do our best. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. Sharon's look at got the a chair. chair. Look at the angle he's got it. Killings, look out, Ron. Truth doesn't even know where he is. Not a clue. Not a clue. Oh, oh. God, that hurt. Right in the gut. Yeah, drilled him right in the stomach with the chair. Brother Ray from Team 3D. I'm not sure who he's got down there. He's got somebody. Truth and Jared oh, battle. Oh, 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 run the truth killing somehow got to turn around. I don't know how he did it because we missed it. But I mean, it's just because. Look at this. Brother Ray in the fist. He's just going right at it. Killing's going to try and mount a comeback. I still don't even know what did. We lost Brother Devon. Yeah, you're right, she's right in her face. Meanwhile, the action in the ring with Storm and Devon. 
I guess they're the legal men at this point. This is your All we have to go by. Corner mount by the Tennessee Cowboy, Brother Ray. Not gonna put up with this. Oh, look at this, the teamwork right there by Brother Ray and Brother Devon. Brother Devon trying to untangle himself. Here he goes, but wait a minute. The Wildcat cracked it. What did he hit him with? With Dave Mitchell's cane. That's it. Oh, look at the power of a bear. They've got some order, I'm guessing that's momentary. Share it, all of his weight. Oh man, you think about it, he applies that weight to the back of the head, which switches that neck right into that rope. Unprotected, the throat goes right across the steel cable. Monster Abyss now in, laying in those, those big right hands. A series of shots now right into the gut, right into the midsection of Diva. Now he goes upstairs, caught him in the top of the head. Say what, that's a strong fist. Look at, look at Brother Diva. I mean, he's coming back with a vengeance, but oh, what a knee. Right into the solar plexus yeah, right there. Perfectly placed. It's, it's one of those moves that, that takes the wind out of you yes. immediately, and you saw that Devon just went down in a heap. Swing and a miss at the clothesline by Storm. Brother Devon goes airborne, went off his feet, dropped the cowboy with that lariat. Yeah, now, now order's been restored. You catch your breath. Oh, well, I'm kind of glad, like you said, I was, I was getting dizzy trying to follow everything. Brother Ray, man, look at this. He now has his bearings. And Cowboy James Storm is in no man's land. Oh, oh he was up in the air. Nice hip toss right there yeah, on the wild. Bad landing for both members of AMW. Side slam by Brother Ray. Fall away slam. Oh, you can see Wildcat, he caught that wrong. Brother Ray doesn't give him any chance to catch his breath. He just, look at those smacks. Like a full court press, he's on him. Oh, stack up AMW in the corner. And, and here we go. Oh, oh, what a shoulder block in the both of them. I mean, man alive. <laughs> spine buster. Mid-ring spine buster to the Jared just in him. time. Save the bacon of AMW. And Jarrett's army. Boy, he did, man. He got there with a split second. Look at this. Look at that shoulder block right into both of them. God, what an impact in the corner as Rhino came charging in. That's broken down again. It's Jarrett and Rhino in the ring. The other six somewhere to be found in the impact zone. Jarrett sent for the ride. Close line does not connect. Oh, look at the strength oh, of yeah. the war machine. This press slam is going to be great. Oh. Just the power, effortless, effortless. Jarrett reeling, gonna go over, yes. Belly to belly, he just got planted by Rhino. Is it time? No, oh, he's setting up Measure for the him. Gore. Measuring for that gore. Oh, oh look at that, oh, feel good. They talk about sacrifice. Get her, get her, Gore. Get her. If she wants to put herself in the way, then I'll tell you, she ought to pay the price. Begging for mercy. Oh. right there in the middle of the ring. Yeah, but what a boot from Abyss. It came right just to the left of the camera shot there. Mitchell's up on the apron, trying to, to blow. See Jackie, look yeah. at this. You can see a little cat fight brewing. Now the cat fight brewing outside, but we're gonna try and follow the action inside at the same time with the monster Abyss and the War Machine Rhino. What a series of matches these two men have had over the course of the past couple of months here in TNA, and they're battling again. And Andrew Thomas, you know what? I can't blame him. No, are you kidding? Then he jumped over there right by James Mitchell. He realized he better get back in the ring. Intimidation factor from the monster. Rhino's not intimidated, but he is stopped with a perfectly placed knee right in the gut. Normally, referees beg for, for high-profile matches. This uh -huh. is one of those where it's the short straw that has to go out there in this crowd. Close line in the corner, drops Rhino, Abyss follows him. Got him. No. no, just two. Wow, the action has just been so fast-paced and just so violent. Now Jeff Jarrettson here with the these two have met before. Title, oh, nice drop kick by the king of the mouth. Leg extension.
attention by Jarrett. Drills him with the drop kick, but he's not able to put him away. Just a two count. Jackie and Gale look on from ringside. They Tag in. Yep, legal man now. James Storm. I mean, this war. It has been a war. They both, the lines have been drawn. And through all this, you gotta still wonder, where's Steve? Where's Steve Gordon? Oh, what a kick. Rhino got his leg up. His form came charging in, but Storm answers him. Slams him, pins him. No, just two. AMW's James Storm just on the verge of gaining the victory for his four-man team. Tag in, Wildcat now legal. So Harrison Storm, the NWA World Tag Champs, AMW with a double team on Rhino. All oh, these guys work together as good as any tag team we've ever seen here in GNA. You hear the chant? Oh yeah. Sounds like the fans in the Impact Zone, they've been to the movies lately. A little Brokeback Mountain chant for AMW. Oh, they're gonna deal with that. As long as that movie's popular, it's gonna be focused at those two with the way the crowd feels about them. Absolutely. Harris says, let's slow it down. Let's keep Rhino grounded. Let's continue to work on Rhino. Let's take the breath right out of him, as you're seeing in mid-ring. Let's weaken him, and let's keep him on our side of the ring. That's obviously their strategy. Fans are behind Rhino. You hear the chant? They want to get him back up to his feet here. Referee going to check. I tell you what, That's though, one. I, I like what Wildcat's doing right here. Wide here, we got to see his hand. I That's mean, two. It's so close. Here it is. Up. Yeah. Oh, baby, two oh. and three quarters. That was close. You talk about reaching down and finding something. The War Machine did, and look at him. He's fighting to his feet. Wildcat's holding on for dear life. But look at the War Machine, just one shot at all. But Wildcat just grabs him by the hair and flings him down. Yeah, stopped him in mid-momentum. Jarrett's gonna try and cherry pick this baby. No! Quickly, another one out again. No! That's the experience of Jeff Jarrett showing here. He sees a man who's vulnerable. He sees that Rhino's been beaten down for the last several minutes. And he's gonna just get right in and go right for the pin. Well, it's all about getting the win. It's all about the bragging right? And now look at the knee, the leg, put right over the neck of Rhino. And Rhino is in a dire situation here. He's got to find a way to get a tag into somebody. Oh, what a shot from the head. That ought to get the broke back. Not a chance going. Sure, right. Cut him with that headbutt, then the follow cover. Didn't have a leg hooked, and as a result, Rhino able to avoid the three count. A monster abyss now in. Just daring Rhino to get to his feet. The two rivals square off once again. Look at these shots. Oh man, one shot after another, right to the top of the head. Think of the beating that Rhino's taking. I mean, it's not just one person. He had to deal with all four of them. All four of them have taken their shots at him. Yeah, they keep bringing a fresh man in. Team Jarrett between himself, AMW, and Abyss. It's been four on one against the War Machine. Abyss from the middle row. Oh, oh my God, that's 350 pounds of splash. One, oh, Brother Ray knew it there. He knew that was about all Rhino could take. Yeah, Brother Ray from Team 3D screaming at Rhino. I made the save for you, but now you've got to get one of the three of us in. Easy for us to say. Mid-ring collision right there. Maybe this is the break that Rhino needs. Not sure who got the better of it there. Both men connecting. Obviously, Jarrett's able to get to his At least making eye contact with yeah, his he's got the tag And yet. now the tag. Wildcat legal and drops the elbow. Harris dropped it right on the back of Rhino's head. Rhino just doesn't have it in him right now. He's just taking a beating from everybody, one after another after another, and he just can't seem to get over there. Brother Ray made a great save earlier. I don't know if you can keep doing that, though. Just putting that shoulder in. Just, yeah, you just bum rushed him right in the corner. Just muscled him into the corner, put the shoulder in as we see Gale and Jackie with that ongoing friction at ringside. Double team now from the tag champs. Rhino fired into the corner, turnbuckles. And here comes Harris. Oh. Went for a spear, went for a shoulder block in the corner. Didn't connect, but Rhino came out charging. Well, Rhino again just used everything he had now. He can hear him over there with the crowd cheering him. He's wanting to get over. You got the crew, you got Devon, you got the other way. And here comes the former two time NWA champion. Ron, the truth killing, unloading. The right hands for everybody. Oh, he's been ready to go. He's the one person that's got the most rest, I think, with this whole thing started.
turning and look at him, just take it. Oh, what a shot to the head of Jerry. Now, the Wildcat gonna try and shoot Killings off, but the revitalized truth reverses and counters and drops it with that spinning forearm shot. Rocket storm with those right hands. Oh, wait a minute. You oh, no. Monster uh, yeah. your position right there. You're anticipating the same thing that I am. Here he goes. Oh, the truth heard it coming. I guess it's easy to hear 350 pounds, and then he kicks him out of the ring. Dropkick sends the monster to the floor. Killing. Gonna take him up. Oh, wow. What a jawbreaker that, that was. Pin to Jarrett. Luckily, again. luckily for the save. The second time he came in at the very right moment. Here we go again. All eight men in the battle. Action in the ring, Team 3D. And Jarrett, now 3D, headed out to the floor. Wait, oh, wait a minute. Uh, Mitchell, Mitchell, Mitchell just passed in the guitar to Jarrett. Well, we knew it was a war, and here he goes. He's got it hidden from the referees, keeping it away from him. Killings, Rhino, who's got, who's got, who's got their name on the guitar? Oh, he missed it. Abyss dropped Rhino with that big slam. Here comes the truth! Oh, they both go tumbling right me. over the rail, right over the ring, onto the mat, right in front of the rail. Brother Ray's got Jarrett. Left's first series of them. Oh, had a little few words right there for him, and he scooped him up. Bam, down he goes. Big slam by Brother Ray. Where's Devon? Where's Devon? Devon from the top.
even though he was handcuffed. From outside the ring, Wildcat Chris Harris hooked the leg. That enabled the stroke. Don, show everybody what went down in this war. Oh, you there's just so many things. There you see the 3D hit by Team 3D. And then you saw the death sentence right there. And then look at the truth when he came over after Jeff Jarrett pulled the referee out. But then Jarrett able to find them time to hit the stroke. And that time the referee was in position and it was over. Jeff Jarrett's army. Victorious in the eight-man tag team war. Yeah, Destination X, it's been incredible. Now is the time to make your plans to join us next month. In April, it's lockdown. You want to make your plans right now to join us next month. It's lockdown. We're still at Destination X, and oh. we still have... Well, look at this. I'm trying to talk about Ultimate X. Yeah. What are you Where's talking about? Where's Stinger at? What do you mean, where's he at? How the hell do I where's know? Where's Mr. Ambush at? Where's Wait, Stinger at? How would he we know? He doesn't have the guts to come out here. He doesn't have the guts to come out here. Not only is Sting a quitter, but Steve Borden is too. Feeling cocky, obviously. I don't see him anywhere out here. What's, what's Steve what's Borden, I'm gonna give you one last opportunity. And if you do not prove me wrong, then it is going to be living proof that Sting is a quitter. I want all y'all, yeah, I'm going to give him to the count of 10. If Sting is not out here on the count of 10, it's the moment of truth that we've all been waiting for, that he is a proven quitter. Sting, here we go. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, look at eight, the cockiness. Nine. All right, Sting. This is the moment of truth. The moment we've all been waiting for. Either you are a proven quitter, or you're going to come back and defend that ragtag family that you call sons and daughters and old ladies. Oh, this and I want back. everybody to join in on this one final count. Sing. Ten. What? Thing's going to come in on Jeff Jarrett's terms. <laughs> I have been proven right. Sting is a quitter. Now I hit my music and I have won the war. I have won the battle. And now I've set my sights on the world title. Christian Cage, Bonnie Brown, I'm going to be watching. I'm coming for the winner. Doesn't prove anything to me. Does it prove anything to you? Not a thing. Not in the least. Ultimate X is next. No matter how much I achieved, no matter how far I went, they doubted. For nine months, you've run roughshod over the exodus. Samoa Joe, the Samoan submission machine. You've beaten and you've bloodied. Those who doubted, I made them regret. Samoa Joe, for all your brutality, what do you do when you are at the ultimate disadvantage? As brutal as you are in this ring, and as relentless as you are outside of this ring. This match goes above it. This match is beyond it. Christopher Daniels, I've kicked your head in. AJ Styles, I've almost ended your career. Yet you two still stand before me and you doubt me. And for that, I will make you regret. Destination X, what's one more bridge to cross? What's one more Ultimate X? This is my match. This is my world. This is my Ultimate X. Samoa Joe, Christopher Daniels, prove me wrong. You will doubt me, and I will make you regret. Samoa Joe, this is the moment of truth. The Ultimate X match. The exhibition title on the line tonight, and of course, an undefeated streak that some have compared to Bill Goldberg.
JB, what you fail to understand is that I've been waiting. Cameraman, look at these eyes. I haven't slept one night since the TNA Championship Committee took my belt from my hands and hung it on that godforsaken contraption. Christopher Daniels, I've waited to kick your head in one more time. AJ Styles, I've waited to choke you out one more time. And as for your comparison, JB, with me, it's never about who's next, but who's left. Get ready for the first of two championship matchups at Destination X. We'll break it down with the X-Factors. Will the revolutionary steel structure known as Ultimate X be the difference maker in preventing Samoa Joe from retaining the X Division title? Both Styles, three matches, and Daniels with two bouts, they've competed in Ultimate X. For Samoa Joe, it's his first chance. Since arriving in TNA last year, Joe unbeaten in one-on-one -on -one matchups. His undefeated streak not at stake, but the X Division title is on the line at Destination X. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Ultimate X Contest. In this match, the first wrestler to climb the steel girders, maneuver the cables, and return to the ring mat with the title belt will be declared the winner and the X Division Champion. Introducing the participants, first from the City of Angels, he is the Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels! This is the third time that the Fallen Angel has been involved in Ultimate X action. His record to date is one and one. Challenger number two is from Gainesville, Georgia. He is the phenomenal A. The defending X Division champion. He is the undefeated Sumo and Submission Machine. Sumo! You can see the red eyes, the lack of sleep. Obviously, this is weight on his mind. He knows that this is an obstacle that is going to be tough to overcome. But one thing about this man, he destroys all in his path. But this is the ultimate test. You called it the great equalizer. We'll see if he can overcome. And when you look up at that belt, suspended so high above the ring, it gives you a perception of what these men have to do. It's unreal. And AJ Styles tries to get up there quickly, and you can see Samoa Joe knows. What would you think that Samoa Joe strategy has got to be in a match like this. I mean, I would think, Don, that he's going to have to try and take both of his challengers out of the matchup. Do everything to be so physical to them that you wear them down to the point where they're not going to be able to climb it. Look at AJ! Oh, he saw that, but look how AJ, how sharp he was. He realized he didn't have the shot to go at it, so he got down to his feet so he could deal with Joe head on. Sliding attempt at a kick by Styles doesn't connect. Joe takes oh, Styles over and plants him. Meanwhile, the fallen angel Gonna try and maneuver across the steel cables. Made it about five, six feet out towards the middle, but Joe's there to momentarily stop his momentum. Nice elbows right there by the fall. Oh, wow! That just shows you the power of Samoa Joe. I, I, I'm not sure on this strategy right now that Daniels and Styles are doing. Obviously, they're trying to get up high quickly and force Joe to make some maneuvers, but I'm telling you, when you get up that high, the falls are a lot farther, and they hurt a lot worse. Did you notice on the close-up look there at the X Division champion Samoa Joe, that little look out of the corner of his eye, almost that hesitation before he started to climb up. Oh! The steel structure has Styles and Daniels work together as a team, one with the leg sweep, one with the clothesline, to take the champ down. What a combination right there. Now they gotta go at each other. You know, they've kind of been focused on Joe. Oh, look at that. Athleticism, and then nails him with the drop kick. Wow. He's something special.
special, man. The phenomenal one with the boot for Samoa Joe after he took Daniels momentarily out of this match, and now AJ gonna head to the corner. Those are 20 foot high steel girders that we've placed in the corners of the ring. I swear now, they get higher and higher, Mike, every time. Across those steel cables, they're attached to the top of each girder, and now it's Daniels and Styles with the gold in the middle. Look at this, and you can see Daniels trying to kick him. Then he's, oh, they both go falling. Both men crashed down to the canvas. X Division belt remains and stays in place. Daniels, forearm shots to the head of Samoa Joe. Now gonna try and shoot him off at the 280 pounder. Reverses, misses the clothesline, but the flying knee was right there, right in the face of Daniels. You know, when you look at a match like this and you think it's all gonna be won on the, ro on the ropes, it's the war on the ropes, but it's really not. It's the ground war. You've gotta make sure your opponents are out of it so that you can go unimpeded across those ropes because if you get up that high and someone brings you down, could be out for the rest of the match. Well, you're right, bad landing if that's the case. Springboard by Styles, and a phenomenal one with the forearm shot that rocks Samoa Joe in the corner. It looks like he just didn't catch it quite as clean as he does so many times. Joe able to get out of the way. That's why he's still on his feet. Oh, look at that right there. Joe sends him over the ropes, right in the top of Christopher Daniel. He back body drops Styles over the top, crashing into Daniels. Here's another look. Oh man, that's perfect. He's got them both outside right now. If he can catch his breath, this is a good opportunity for Joe to try to scale. Daniels and Styles both get to their feet. Joe checking out that steel Look out! Oh, he wants to end Oh, look at that! Unbelievable! We gotta see that again! Over the top! Knock the both out! That's how you do it! Look at this! Wow! That's why the X Division is about no limit. That's 280 pounds that just went flying over the ropes, twisting in midair, and the champ took out both challengers with one move. Samoa Joe showing why he stayed unbeaten for nine months, and you can see here again, they're sitting head on head, head to head matchup, but the belt is on the line, and Joe going up top, going up high. And this Joe, is somewhere he's never been. Four. Gonna try and position his way, gonna try and make his way across the cables. Looks like he's doing pretty good for himself. Oh, oh. Man. But he comes crashing down just at the same time that Daniels levels Styles. And that's the situation. He got up there. If you've never been there before, and I've asked everybody that's been in this match, they say it's an unbelievable feeling because those ropes get sweaty when people have already gone across them and you lose your grip. And if you're not used to it, if you're not prepared for that, it happens just like it did with Joe. Down you come. And Joe doesn't have the opportunity to prepare for this kind of a match. He's never been in this situation before. And that's exactly what Larry Zabisco and the championship committee, that's exactly what they were thinking when they put the X Division title on the line in the signature match, Ultimate X, what a drop kick by Daniel. I'll tell you what, Christopher Daniel's showing unbelievable strength at what he did with Joe. And you hear the crowd showing their appreciation for the fallen angel as he sends it right at AJ. I mean, this is just, you can see the confidence growing, I think, right now in Christopher Daniels. Yeah, with every second this matchup progresses, you saw the look on the face of the fallen angel. He's been there before. He's been X Division champion before. And he just dropped Joe with a charging flying knee. He just sent him out right there. And AJ Styles still a little shaken up. Christopher Daniels seems to have to clear his head. But AJ immediately realizes where Daniels is going and not going to allow it. Bested him in the back of the legs right That's there. Trump. It's no man's land for the fallen angel. And Daniels, those shots to oh, oh. back of the leg, and that one to the back of the head and right in the shoulder. Like it hurt AJ. I think so. I mean, that's what happens when you hit someone that hard. Caught him with such velocity and such force, that may impact AJ's ability to climb the steel structure and get across the ring, just that kick. Well, he's focused right there, but all of a sudden, Christopher Daniels, and once you get up that high and the other man gets you, you've got to try to find a way to get out of danger. Look at AJ hang on for dear life. He's got his arms wrapped around the steel girder. Now, he knows how far those fall. Look at this, Daniels is in a bad spot. AJ, look at this. Look at, oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. I don't believe what I just, that was insane. I, I, AJ 
Anthony Styles can think on his feet. Well, he was thinking 20 feet up in the air that time. And how do you do that, Don, when you've got your opponent, when you've got Daniels, who's right there, who's following your every move, but AJ was able to improv and right in mid-move, but the he's, power bomb. He's going for it here. The first ever X Division champion, AJ Styles, on the verge of regaining uh, that belt, but here comes Joe back into play. Almost timing it, almost timing it. Perfect, oh, what a boot to the face of AJ. Oh man, Joe's got his win back. Senton backsplash, drops right down across the chest, and there's the big knee in the corner, and that one, oh, here comes the face wash. Caught him first with the knee to the side of the head. Oh. And there's that boot, the bottom of the boot, repeatedly face washing Daniels. Oh, look out. Oh, oh man, the force that he hits that with is devastating. Good camera shot right there. You can just see exactly what it is he does with that big 280 pound boot. Now, what's Joe doing here? Joe drops down to the floor. Oh, the crowd. He don't know. Oh, no. Steel chair. You know what? Well, we've seen this in the past from Samoa Joe. When the steel chair comes into play, it turns into a very, very sick, brutal situation. And Christopher Daniels can tell you about that. Think about the concussion that he suffered because of Samoa Joe. What's he going to do now? Is he's he grabbing another one? I think he's going to go for the Olay here. He's going to go uh -huh. for the Olay kick. Oh, oh he's got it. right into the steel guardrail, but you're right, AJ cut him off. Back live. Oh, this is a chance right now for AJ Styles, and he can get a, this is it, it's such a rough match, and, and, and when they talk about it, they say, you have to find the right time to go for it, and you, once you do, you realize you are in no man's land. Yeah, timing is really the key to this match. Making sure that your opponents are weak and sufficiently oh, see there. That's what you talked about the sweat, earlier. The sweat. The sweat from the previous attempts at climbing as AJ tried to jump up on those. Oh, and the cables. Oh! Oh, the force! The brute force! Joe drops AJ directly down and uh oh, steel chair into place. Oh no, he's gonna try to put AJ out of it. He's gonna make sure that AJ Styles can't make the run. I mean, there's so many different things that Joe can do. That steel chair comes in there. The one that we've seen repeatedly is the muscle buster on the chair. And he's positioning AJ for that muscle buster, but Daniel's in for the save. I think Christopher Daniels is one of those moments where he knows how devastating that move can be. Oh, but look at Joe. He's like he's feeding on it now. Oh, look at the ducking, though, with the and boxing match. back. The series of those open hand shots from Samoa Joe to the head of Daniels with the fallen angel. He just put Joe up on the top. Oh, look at this. He's got him. He's got a clutch on him. Look at that. He went to oh, come for us. Daniels tried that kick. Wow. How high did AJ have to get up in the air right there? Way up to catch Joe in the head. But he did. He connected on the boot. <laughs> These guys are so, so incredible. And what they do sometimes is just absolutely bordered on insanity. Oh, the headbutt right you can, there. You can hear the slaps to the side of the head, and then the headbutt as Daniels reels off a right hand that caught Joe right on the jawline. Looks like Joe's actually found him a perch there to try to catch his breath, and look at this. They double team him. Double team? It looks like a muscle buster. Oh, they are. It's a double team muscle buster. They just hit Joe's own patented move on him. Buster, Styles and Daniels lay out Samoa Joe with his own finisher. Look at Samoa Joe. He, he had to realize when he was in the grip of both of them what was going to happen. And now it's between Styles and Daniels. The Joe is in no condition right now. Both challengers get to their feet. Both men connect with right hands. I think, I think Styles may have got the better with that last one, and then that one was right in the jaw. They're just trading on nice knee right there. Sometimes you trade punches, the other one expects a punch. That's why you counter with the knee. Daniels trying to realign his jaw. Shoots Styles off into the ropes. Missed with the clothesline. Daniels comes right back. And first, first kick missed, second kick. Pele! Pele! Out of nowhere, the Pele! Wow, I love that move. 
because you never see it coming. Well, you love it so much. Look Check it out one more time. And then here it comes. Boom. Right on top of the head. AJ. Gonna try and get to the corner. Uses the ring ropes to bring himself back up. And now he climbs. He's got one hand on the steel. Gonna slowly make his way up. Joe recovers in mid-ring. Daniel's gonna try and use the ropes to get up. And here goes Styles. Styles is so close. Styles. Oh, he's, he's on it. He's on the he's stair. On it. He's just gotta take down oh, the Wait a minute, he's got a chair. Joe. Oh, man. Lost him with a chair shot. Bashed him with that chair. Steel chair to the back of AJ Styles. As, as the phenomenal one was just a foot away from taking down the gold and getting the title oh. belt back. Daniels uses the chair to his advantage and kicks him right into the face Show the Samoa submission machine. Joe never saw that one coming. His peripheral vision did not allow him to see Daniels. He had the chair mixed with the side of his body, and Daniels drop kicked the chair right into Joe and Fallen Angel. Oh, He's headed up the steel. This is his opportunity right here. Christopher Daniels, he's been here before. He's been on the losing end, and look how he used his legs. Daniels, smart move. Gonna go across the cable. Oh, he's gonna get it. He's, he's got so the belt. Close. He's, he's got the belt. Down. He's got the belt. He's got it. Has he got it? Nobody can stop him. He's, he's got, got it. it. Daniels wins the title. right there when Joe came over the top of the rope. And then you see Joe go out right there. Oh, the power bombs, the muscle busters. And then Christopher Daniels, when he got the opportunity, and that's how you win this. Daniels is now X Division champ for the second time. We're back live in the impact zone. Look at this, AJ's Jake. holding the hand out. You know what we've been talking about for months, the code of the X Division? That's it right there. Oh, look at Joe. He's furious. You're right, he's furious. And he's he's turning steel steps over. Oh, look God, out. he can't look out. believe look it. Look out, he's tossing steel steps all over. He Go. kicked the broadcast table earlier. But the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels, is X Division champion. One thing, though, that Joe can say, he can look him right in the eye and say, it took a match like Ultimate X for you to get this belt off And of think me. about it. Samoa Joe was not pinned. No, he wasn't. Samoa Joe did not submit. No, he wasn't. But he, he lost the X Division title. Speaking of titles, to the back and JB with the champ, Christian Cage. Go, JB. Wow, what an incredible matchup. And it's now time for the main event here at Destination X. My guest at this time, the current reigning and defending heavyweight champion of the world, Captain Charisma, Christian Cage. Have to ask you, after what happened on Impact two weeks ago, we saw what happened, the pounce into the rail. Keep going. You are not at 100%. In fact, some have gone as far as to say is that you're the underdog in this world title match. The underdog, huh? Are you insinuating the money? Brown's already kicked my ass? What else is new? I got my ass kicked. What else is new? You're still taking fashion tips from Ryan Seacrest. What else is new? I get my ass kicked all the time, it doesn't matter. I got my ass kicked on the way to the arena three times today. I don't care. I, I made a living out of getting my ass kicked. In fact, I'll go one better. I take the best ass kicking in this business. You see, that's why the peeps respect Captain Charisma. You see, Monty Brown runs around, running his mouth, talking about how he wants respect, using the word respect like it doesn't mean anything. Well, Monty, you want respect? You, you think people should just, just respect you because you are a former great NFL star? You are a world-class athlete? It doesn't work like that in this business, my friend. You have to get in that ring each and every night and bust your ass to get respect. 
Monty Brown, you walk around here saying this is your hunting ground. This is your hunting ground. This is your Serengeti. Well, you're delusional, my friend. You're delusional. This isn't the Serengeti. This is the peep zone, you silly bitch. And Christian Cage is the pride of the peeps. So after tonight, Monty, after tonight, you're going to find out that your record in NWA championship matches is the same as your record in Super Bowl games. Winless. And Captain Charisma will without a doubt walk out as the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Because that's how I roll. How I roll. When I beat Christian Cage, and I'm gonna do it, you and only you get the next title shot. That's a guarantee, that's a promise, and I'm willing to shake on it. He's got him in the stroke! Attempt of the stroke is blocked! He's got him in the beat! Against the odds, I finally got my opportunity, and I made the most of it. See, it's a new day in TNA. Destination X, March 12th, I want my title shot. Bring the title down to the Alpha Male, or the Serengeti will be coming directly to you. Well, I know where the Serengeti is. You want to come out here and give a geography lesson? Let me ask you a question, smart guy. What's the capital of Thailand? Why don't you indulge me with your geography, big guy? Indulge me, let me know, tell me. Bangkok. Monty Brown just walking around here. Whoa! Oh, did you see that? The Alpha Man, he just blindsided the champ. Oh, he just nailed him right there. You can see he's just going right at him as Monty Brown is absolutely giving Captain Charisma everything. And you can see the tackle of that by Christian Cage. He's a sidestep. The Alpha Man will do it. Christian Cage, I was stalking you, and that was just a mere example. I'm not 100%. You know, I have three crack ribs. I don't like to sit here and make excuses. I'm the world heavyweight champion. And Monty Brown, you want to occupy my spot? You want to become the man? You want to become the world heavyweight champion? You're going to have to pry this title from my cold, dead hands because I'm not giving it up. The title will be coming to the Serengeti, where it's always belonged. And welcome back, everyone, to Destination X. You are looking at the Impact Zone. Well, actually, it's been renamed. You're looking wide at the Peep Zone and now back at the broadcast table. Mike and Don with you in anticipation of a main event matchup. What has been one incredible pay-per-view. Oh, Mike, you have said it when you think of everything we've seen. And the, I mean, just from the war and the, the international match and the, the revenge of, of the James Gang and then Ultimate X. And now we get to see the title defense of Captain Charisma, Christian Cage. We know he's hurt. We know he's not 100%, but it doesn't seem to bother him. He feels like he's been down that road before, but he's never been the champ before. He's never defended his title before. Boy, that's the key, I think. It's the first title defense for the new NWA World Heavyweight Champion. It was last month and against all odds, but Christian Cage, Talk about an aptly named pay-per-view. Against all odds, he became NWA World Heavyweight title holder. Tonight, it's the alpha male Monty Brown in the role of the challenger. We've got so many questions to answer in this matchup. We're gonna break it down for you. We're gonna look at the raw numbers right now with the tail of the tape and all the bullet points behind this world title matchup. And it is time for our second of two Championship bouts at Destination X. Here are the raw numbers. And a quick look at them show the substantial physical edge for the challenger. He outweighs the champ by nearly 40 pounds, but check out the experience advantage that Christian has over the alpha male. Here's the bullet points. And against all odds, Christian made history, defeating Jeff Jarrett to win the gold. Tonight, Monty Brown is first challenger. The former NFL linebacker, for Buffalo and New England, he's familiar, high profile, high pressure situations. He claims he won't be intimidated. 
Christian admits he's not 100%. The pounce attack by Monty Brown. Christian told us on Impact last night his ribs are injured. Will it affect his performance? It's time to find out. because that's his domain. That's where he hunts. That's where he feeds. And tonight, he is wanting so badly to win this title. A spot he's been in before, but with each time you gain so much more experience and think about the damage that he did to Christian Cage, will he be able to use that to his advantage? Think about how many months it's been when he's been begging for that chance. Begging for that opportunity. Well, that time has arrived. This is your shot, Alpha Man. Destination X Heavyweight Championship bout of the evening. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA official, Mr. Earl Hebner. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live from Orlando, Florida, introducing your combatants in tonight's main event. First of all, standing in the corner to my right, he weighed in this morning at 267 pounds and comes to us from the Serengeti. He is the number one contender for the NWA Heavyweight Championship of the World. He is the Alpha Male, Monty Brown. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing, coming to us from Toronto by way of Tampa, Florida. He weighed in this morning at 230 pounds and is the current reigning and defending MWA heavyweight champion of the world. He is Captain Charisma Christian. of the utmost importance to both champion and challenger. For the challenger, Monty Brown, this is his opportunity to prove that he belongs in the world's title picture. For the champ, Christian Cage, he's got to prove to the world that last month and against all odds that it wasn't a fluke, that he really deserves to be NWA World's heavyweight champ. And he's going to have to do that to keep the gold against the alpha male. Championship committee member Larry Zabisco, 
confirming the announcement earlier that Earl Hebner, the third man in the ring, he was the referee at Against All Odds when Christian Cage won the gold, and he's the third man for the first title defense. You can see Christian Cage here looking at that belt, I think trying to draw something from it. He kisses it, realizes that he doesn't want to be given this up this early. Doesn't want to be the kind of champion that's one and done. And I think he could tell he was just reliving that moment from against all odds, but now it's on the line. And think about this, if Monty Brown is able, if Monty Brown is able to nail a pounce on those ribs, those cracked ribs that he's got, you can see him taped up. What will that do to Christian Cage? What kind of damage will that inflict? And let's be honest, the alpha male Monty Brown, you've got to know what his strategy is in this matchup. With Christian admitting last night on Impact that the ribs were injured, that he wasn't 100%, you know that Monty Brown is going to do everything, and I mean everything within his power, to take advantage of that situation. Oh yeah, it's, it's, when you're this close to a title, you don't worry about being completely fair. The, the fact is, he's walked into that ring with those ribs taped. That means there's fair game. And you can't, in, in fact, if I'm Monty Brown, I focus on him. I really do. The fact that he wore that, that wrap in here means it's fair game, and I would go for it every chance I've got to do anything I could to inflict the pain and take the breath. Yeah, right out of the champ. And what a pounce that was on impact. It was up on the entrance ramp. He pounced him all the way down to the arena floor, and Christian Cage went side and ribs first right into the steel guardrail. The alpha male, Monty Brown, pretty happy about putting Christian Cage in the position where he's not 100%. You saw the shot right into the ribs by the challenger, and then the shoulder block dropped Christian the champ. And you see that he's going to gonna try and regroup here, but at the same time, reaching over with his hand, and you can see that his ribs are affected by that. He immediately put his hand right to the rib cage. Well, he's thinking about it right now. I mean, think about it. We just saw it happen in the last match. A title match like this. Lives change. Somebody's life will change here tonight. Either it'll be Christian Cage realizing that he's a champ again and, and can continue on, or Monty Brown becomes the new champ. You gotta wonder what the mindset is of the alpha male. He's been here before. He's had it to go against him. And you, you gotta draw on that. You gotta try to to remember everything you learned in those defeats. Sort of a feeling out process. Both men very tentative, not wanting to make a mistake in the opening minutes of this match. The slide through. Christian Cage immediately gets to his feet. Just shoots those chops right in the knife edges, right to the chest, but Monty caught him with a knee, and then a chop, and oh, oh boy. And you just watch to see how Christian Cage is gonna land. Monty Brown, though, by him. Comes right after him, doesn't give him a chance to catch his breath. Doesn't even give him that chance. And that's what Monty Brown's got to do. Monty Brown's got to be relentless. He's had a dream, and look at him. He goes right for the rim. That's right exactly there. what he is. The former National Football League linebacker is relentless on the offensive and sends Christian flying, wow, way over the steel, busting right into the crowd here in the impact zone of Destination Nixon. The challenge, you're going to try and follow up on the champ. Obviously, Monty Brown wants this to be a fight. He wants it to be a brawl. He wants it on his terms. Christian Cage is more of the wrestler, more of the technical wrestler. He wants to get it back in the ring. This goes to Monty Brown's advantage right here, having him up there and getting it into the crowd. Exchange among the fans. Christian getting the better of it, at least in the short term, with the rights and, and then the boot that takes Monty Brown down several steps. Christian Cage trying to get it back to the ring, and you saw that right. Every shot low. Yeah, well, that one was right into the injured ribs. Christian fights back. Even Christian's punches. That's right. Because every time he takes that swing, it he's, jars he's, it. He's, yeah. he's putting pressure and tearing away at the injured ribs. So I mean, it's it's not only Monty Brown's offense against the ribs. It's also every time that Christian Cage tries to deliver an offensive blow of his own, and there's the boot to the head. Christian Cage got the match back in the ring, which is where he wants it. He's going to have to figure out a way to block out the pain. That's all there is to it. You just got to realize that this is a moment. This is one of the greatest moments in your life. A, a championship bout, whether you're defending or whether you're going for it, and you just got to suck it up, man. You just got to forget about the pain. You got to forget about the ribs. 
But the problem is, they're always a constant reminder when something we, like that happens. And we, and we just saw it again. Even though Christian hit him with three or four shots, you notice that when he when, when he pulled away from the corner, he immediately went to grab for his ribs. Monty Brown takes advantage of that opening. Just the oh man, just the fact that the Christian didn't deliver a blow, it gave him a second or two to recover. He shoots him out to the floor, and the alpha male, boy, is he on the offensive. And I like the pace that the alpha male is going with right now. Ooh, right into the right his own yes. pace. His own pace. He he knows that you can you can flame out if you go at it. If you let your emotions get the better of you, you can get exhausted too quickly. Monty Brown knows that, and he's doing it at his pace right now, and he knows that Christy Cage is suffering more than he'll admit. Whoa, wild swing with that steel chair. Christian able to avoid the, the chair shot, which you know was headed right for the injured ribs. Yes, Monty Brown dictating the pace, but that also going to enable Christian to try and turn this thing around from the top right into the gut. I mean, Monty Brown he was, knows he was exactly ready. where to put the blows there. Monty Brown, the alpha male, the challenger, certainly ready with that right hand as he caught Christian Cage flying off the top. Now both men outside the ring on the apron. Monty Brown punches to the top of the head. Christian fights back with knife edge chops. Now Christian comes on the oh, apron. Oh, man, it just backfired on him. What a... What a great counter right there by Monty Brown. Just let him come to him. You know, he'll take one to give one, and he just let it come right to him that time and set him up. And I mean, how many bumps is Christian Cage going to be able to withstand from the ring to the mat? Think about that, to the floor. And especially the jarring impact of shots like that and how it affects the injured ribs. Going to take him up. How many times do we have to say it? We've seen it right from the bullet points of this matchup. Right from the opening minute, we talked about the position that the champ is in with the injured ribs. We knew that the challenge of the alpha male would take advantage. And his game plan and his strategy, let's just say it's working to perfection at least at this point. Oh, man, the force! The force of that job and then the right! I mean, Monty Brown has turned this into a fight. He has absolutely turned this into a fight. What a shot right there. Christian rolls back in just to try and stop the alpha male from this offensive onslaught, but Monty Brown gonna have nothing to do with that. Fires him off into the corner, and now gonna take him, gonna try and send him for the ride. Here we go. Oh, right, oh, right back into it, another right. I mean, just clotheslined him right down to the ground, snapping his head back. Think of the jarring he does. Lateral cover, leg hook. Referee Earl Hefner down for a two count. What's going to be going through Christian Cage's mind right now? This is not going the way he's planned. Obviously, this is not going the way he wants it. He's got to find a way to turn the tide here, and Monty Brown's not letting up. Monty Brown's not giving him that window. He's not opening it for him. You know, we talked about the experience edge that the champ has in this match. Double the years of in-ring, 12 to 6. But what you're seeing from the challenger, Monty Brown, is a very sound strategy. The total attack to the ribs, and then shoots him off into the corner. Back first that time. Well, you talked about the alpha male boy and dictating his own pace. It's exactly what he's doing in this title match. And look at the face of Christian Cage. What this rib injury is, he just shoulder blocks the ribs time and time again. It's just that every time he breathes, it's like a knife going through him. Not to mention every time he gets kneed and, and, and hit in the gut, but every time he breathes now, it hurts. And every time he expands his lungs, it hurts his ribs. And could it be any better of a situation for Monty Brown to have a finishing move like the pounce? Oh, my front suplex took him high into the air and crashed him down across that top steel cable. Yes, ribs first. Oh, God. Look at the force. I mean, the power of yeah, Monty Brown. Just the velocity of the whip as he took him directly right into the steel, right into the side of the turnbuckle. Alpha male gonna try and get the champion back up to his feet, but boy, there's not much life left in Christian Cage. Shots to the side of the head. Referee Hefner gonna try and stop that closed fist. But again, it's a basic strategy, but it's a sound strategy because it's an abdominal stretch applied by the alpha male. And you can hear the scream, man. You can hear the scream coming from the champion as he just pulls him back like that. Look at that. And 
just keeps the rocking motion and then applying the blow right there. I mean, this this is exactly what Money Brown's got to do. You've got to exploit the weakness. You've got to exploit wherever you can, and the champion is in major pain with the ribs, and Monty Brown is focusing dead on it. Almost as if he's weakening him for the slaughter, i.e. the pounce. Wants to continue to work on the ribs, just wear Christian Cage down to the point where if he can hit that one pounce, he becomes world's heavyweight champ. Elbow shots. Oh! Monty Brown I just, thought he was going to turn it around. Just flipped him right over. I mean, turned him inside out right there. And Pin, one, two, two oh! Barely, barely did he get the shoulder up for oh. more than three counts. And you saw the insult to injury right there as he just pushed, oh, he just applied that knee directly down into Cover the Cover again, two, two, no. When you drop down with that knee with 267 pounds of pressure behind it, can do nothing but further injure the ribs of the champ. Oh, the champ trying to find some leverage, trying to find some way. Just doing anything to yeah. fight. Oh, I mean, you almost have to resort to whatever you can. Just like that. Every time, though, it looks like he's tries to mount some sort of a charge. Monty Brown right now is just, oh, physically just in a much better condition right now. Elbow caught him coming in from the middle rope. Christian Cage out of the corner. Oh, again, look at the power and the strength and of the alpha landing. Male. He went for a tornado DDT. But in mid-move, Money Brown One, turned him off. Two. He landed on the ribs, and he followed up with a two count. Here's look at this. Look. look how high he gets him in the air. Oh, oh man, the and, force. And, and just totally unprotected the way that he crashed down to the canvas. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm... It's tough to watch, You, you don't want to feel point. sorry for the champion because, you know, that's... He understands this is part of being a champ and a part of defending your title, but every blow that you see, it just, you wince. You see him wincing in pain, you find your, oh, that's how you do it. You turn it around like that. Could be the momentum shift that the champ needs. Looked like the alpha male was gonna take him high up overhead with the backdrop suplex, with that back body drop, but instead the champ, Christian Cage, dropped him, spiked him right on his head. Referee Hebner puts in the count, he's up to five. And it was just an unbelievable DDT, and he was waiting for the moment. And you saw when he, he saw the opportunity, he didn't hesitate for a second. He brought Monty Brown on top of his head with all the force that he could muster. Both of them able to get to their feet right here. As there you see Christian Cage getting to his, Monty getting to his. Yeah, but as he gets to his feet, and as you take the close-up look, you can see that he's still favoring the ribs. Here comes the NFL linebacker. No, on him with the knee. Wild clothesline. Back elbow didn't connect either, but that forearm shot, it knocked him down to the running clothesline, does as well. Now he's got to dig down deep and mount the comeback, but no, he's cut off with the knee to the ribs. Oh, he shot with the left hand. I mean, Monty Brown has just stopped every, every time Christian Cage gets something going, Monty Brown. Oh, nice block right there by Christian Cage, getting the legs up. Two, not enough. Might have been a match saver, I'm not sure, but the way that he was springing off the ropes, oh, he I, had the feel, I had the feeling that the alpha male was gonna go for the pounce at that point. Well, you, you look at this match and you realize one good solid pounce on Christian Cage with his rim situation, and that's gonna do it. He's got to find a way to avoid it. Yeah, that pounce, it could be the difference maker in this match. The corner mount by the champ, Christian Cage, but he only able to reel off a couple of right hands. But look at these knees. Oh, I tell you what, Christian Cage now reaching down and finding something that only a champion can find. Just somehow blocking the pain out and working things away to his favor. And now he's got Monty Brown lying there on that mat. And this is his opportunity to hit a big blow right here. I think he realizes that he's got to pull out all the stops here. He can't really, he can't wait for the, oh, he went for the frog splash. Oh, wow. Oh, that was high risk with his situation yeah. and no reward. Uh, I'm not exactly sure that was the wisest move. I think he wants to end it quickly. I, I really do. And look at this. Monty Brown now going to ground him and just stretch those muscles, stretch those ribs. Yes, he's got him hooked right here. He's got his legs wrapped around the injured ribs and at the same time, cranking back with the submission. He's got the, he's got the arm seized at this point and he's cranking on the neck of Christian Cage. Just pulling right there on the head, pulling on the neck and then using that body and he's, he's got that like scissor grip right there on the... Look at him, Christian Cage doing whatever he can. Just desperation, man. Well, that was the move. When Monty Brown has that submission hold applied, his head's exposed, and Christian takes advantage, 
series of shots to the head of the alpha male. Man, just when he comes in, Monty Brown catches it with another boot. Oh, Got look at this string. High up oh! Oh! So many years of conditioning. This guy has lifted so many weights, and he just picked up Christian Cage like it was nothing. I mean, think about that. Everything that he's gone through on his end. And to be able to just do that, and he just threw him right there on that turnbuckle. Yeah, just draped him right over the corner. Turnbuckles, follow-up move, series of shots to the back, and yes, directly into the injured ribs. Now from the middle rope. Oh no, he's got, oh, he's pulling on it. Christian Gage trying to use his head there to break the grip, and yet, oh, you can just hear him scream. And at the same time, he's holding on to that structure from the Ultimate X, but all that does is open up the rib cage, headbutts, one after the other. Oh, what a way, That's just, that was just experience right there from Christian Cage, just knowing that, just keep it going, the force of the head, there he goes, and he catches him. Drops down with the backsplash, one, cover. Two, two, two. Alpha male. Used his leg strength that time to avoid the three count. Christian challenging him. Tells him, bring it on. He's gonna go for the move here. A oh, trinier attempt is blocked instead. And oh, Alpha Bomb! Power Bomb! Alpha Bomb! One, two, no! I thought it was over. Oh, oh man, the force he nailed him with on the mat. Yeah, almost a new heavyweight champion crowned right there. Monty Brown hit the Alpha Bomb. Christian Cage. Kicked out before the three. Monty Brown's got to be feeling confident, though. The, every, the longer this goes, the better off he is. Float over. Again, trying to go for that unprettier. And obviously, Monty Brown has studied that move. You can tell that. From his shoulders, Monty Brown has him. Ah, powers him down. And showing us a, a whole new repertoire. Here's One, like two, two. Oh, Christian Gage able to get the shoulder off. That's his Tesla fortitude right there. That's reaching down so deep. He had the leg hook, but at the same time, he didn't have his weight properly positioned across Christian Cage, and that enabled the champ to avoid three once again. The shots to the side of the head by Monty Brown, and now face first to the canvas. Oh, man, just fighting back. Just everything that you've got now, you can't quit if you're Christian Cage. He knows how close this has come. And look at him, just one right after another. Monty Brown puts on the brakes. Oh, here's the ball! Oh. Went for the pounce, but Christian caught him with the boot instead. You know, he, he knew that that moment was gonna come and he planned for it. Well, again going for the alpha bomb, but he can't hit it. Yeah, block! Here we go! He's ah, on, man. Man on his head! On pretty here! One, two, yeah! The winner of the match, and still NWA! and enables Christian Cage to retain the NWA World's Heavyweight title. That's what makes a great champion, finding that opportunity, finding it at the right second. I mean, he knew it was going to be one shot, and when he hit it, he had to close it, and he did, and he's still the champion. Let's look at it again. Oh, that was... This, yeah, this is tough to watch, isn't it? All those shots from the alpha male, Christian fights back, Look at this right here, and you that knew was, oh, that was right tough. on the turnbuckle, right on the ribs. But he hits the unprettier right here, and he hit it perfectly, and he had to. The champ had to hit it perfectly. And he dropped him straight down on his head, and it's time for that post-match celebration. Christian Cage retains the NWA World's Heavyweight title in his very first oh, no. defense. But we know whose music that is. Oh. Goodness gracious. It's the former champ, Man, the king of the mountain, here. Jeff Jarrett. Christian Cage, I came here tonight to do three things, and I've already done two of them. One, I won the war. Number two, I proved to the entire wrestling industry that Steve, Steve Borden is a quitter. And now number three is... I want to reclaim what you stole from me last month. Stole? I'm going to make you a transitional champ just like your brother was up north. I want my rematch, and I want it now. Now? What is rematch and what's it now? Well, wouldn't anybody want a rematch in the condition this? Especially after he's gone through this long match with the injury situation. You promise all these people you retire?
<laughs> Bowles in your court now, Jared. What do you say? Hey, Jared. It's, uh, it's pretty convenient how you come out here after I just finished whipping Monty's ass, bro. Monty ass is... Monty ass. See? I got so beat up, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I just finished kicking some ass. How's that? Give me oh, an shut answer, up. Christian. Shut no, your damn mouth. I'll shut your ass You up. shut you your mouth. No one wants to hear you talking. You know, you know that if I would, if I could, I would give you a shot right here, no problem. But my hands are tied. There's nothing I can do about it. But what I can do, free of charge, no strings attached, is kick your stupid ass one more time. And here comes Jared. And Christian's ready for him. And look at this exchange. Keep in mind, they, oh, Monty Brown is nice. He wants a few more shots, too. And they're all going at him. He's mad he lost the title. And Jim Darren, and look at this. Double team, went for the double clothesline. Oh, what a shot by Christian Cage. Dual clothesline from Christian Cage. One arm for Jared, one Larian for the alpha male. Oh, who is that? That's Abyss. Oh, no, this is the numbers game too much right here. The monster Abyss hits him from behind. Jared's oh, arm. Come on. Jared's army's got his back. Here comes Rhino charging the war machine. Gonna help. Fighting back, going at it. And all, all of a sudden, here comes Team Canada. Here comes AMW. Oh, come on. Alex Shelley as well. They're going to fill up the ring. And oh, they're no. going to just beat the hell out of Christian Cage and Rhino. They're going to make it so he can't even ever defend his title. Look at this, the torture rack right there. He just called for the doomsday. God. Monster Abyss with Mitchell cheering him on. Drops down Christian Cage and look at all the wolves just surround Christian. Oh, you can hear the crowd calling for him. If we ever needed him, the time is now. And they're just absolutely... He's got the cuffs. Oh, look at this cuffing the champion right here. Chris Harris has got the handcuffs. And Christian Cage is being handcuffed to the ring ropes. Oh, this is absolutely brutal. It's just terrible to watch. And they have... Destroyed the champion. Oh, now he's beating him. Guys, Jerry's got a him. belt. He's just ripping the flesh right off of his back with that belt. Oh, and you know everything he's going through with the ribs, and now they just look at they're all taking their shot. Oh, no, not the more. Every one of them, they're passing the belt around, oh, and they're laying them in there. Somebody stop this beating. This is sick. Look at his back. His back is turning all different colors. Put 
middle of the ring. There's no way he can overcome these numbers. Every one of them taking a free shot. That's exactly what they're doing. And now it's Abyss's turn. It was Rude's earlier. Abyss now with him again. Oh, look at this. This is just sick. And to see a legend like this. And Christian's handcuffed during this whole beating. Christian's handcuffed to the ropes. Forced to watch this. Look at Abyss holding the head of Christian so that he can watch. Remember when Sting retired, when he passed the torch to Christian Cage, he called him his brother as he walked out of the impact zone. And now they're forcing Christian Cage to watch what is in absolute destruction. Oh, look at this. Is this just absolutely beating him one after another? Everybody getting a free shot. Scott Steiner now heading into the injury. Look out! Steiner recliner! He's got the Steiner recliner on! Pulling back on the head. He's got the head of Sting. This He's is got, so hard to watch. This is a sick this is situation. Sick. Steve Borden on a night that he came back for redemption. Look at Jarrett. Can't even get in there on his own. Being destroyed by Jarrett's army oh, with the addition of Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner. Jarrett with the guitar. Oh, no. I don't watch this. I don't want to watch this. Steiner said.